smaller and the drinker Getting trashed with the web screen thinkers A cheap night cause I'm feeling kinda thrifty Got a ten pack of beers and a bottle of whiskey Hop off the cork, have a glass of wine hey. I feel safe no, I'll be fine Trouble walking in a straight line But for the Apino Noir It's open bar With our host Mauler and the critical All right, that's our cue to pretend that we like each other again, Mauler. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> God, I'm sick of streaming with you. I hate this bar. <laughs> it's the worst bar ever. And believe me, I've been to some bad ones. <laughs> Talk about shitty movies. Sometimes good ones, sometimes good TV. I mean, it does happen occasionally, yeah. Uh, it's it's a rare thing, but it's nice when it does happen. But, uh, well, welcome everyone to open bar number 47. Almost is at it, 50. Is it going to be Almost 50th there. or the 100th one where the, the reveal at the end of the open bar is that, like, wait, there's no bartender? And the scary music plays and it cuts out? Oh my god, yeah. I feel like yeah. they need kind of a, a lore video around the actual... Yeah, the world Who of the open bar. Who is the open bar bar bartender? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Like, how do, how do these drinks appear next to me? I don't know. Do they just do they just do. I wake up and they're there. So it's one of those. I things don't complain. Where, like, fans complain about it as a plot hole forever, and then they finally address it in the movies. They're like, no, 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 no it's not a plot hole. It's a mystery. Yeah. It was well, subver- Snoke all along. Yeah, I subverted your expectations with this <laughs> bar. What can I say? Uh, well, anyway, I think we, we should start bringing our guests in because we've got a few this evening. So it seems like a good way to kick things off and get everyone in here. What do you reckon? Open I think that's up. a good idea, yes. All right. Well, first of all, back by popular demand, we've got the critical doggo. He's probably not going to say too much tonight, but there he is in all his glory. <laughs> I just really appreciate the contributions. They are, they, they're a few, but they're very, very um, cerebral is what you'd say. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, he's the kind of guy he doesn't, you know, he doesn't speak up often, but when he does, it's worth listening to. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, this is the other critical doggo. So this is Smokey. Uh, you can tell because he's grey, just like I'm starting to go. So um, yeah, he's here, and uh, well, it's uh, I had a couple of weeks where I didn't have him in, and then people didn't like it. So there we go, he's back. Yeah. Um, but good. anyway, we should bring in the actual human guests as well because we'll probably get more sense out of them a little bit. More, <laughs> I would say a little bit. Uh, first up, we have got Echo Chamberlain making his return to the bar. Hello, sir. Good to have you back again, mate. Yeah, evening, gents. Um, I'd be happier if YouTube hadn't uh, age-restricted my latest video in the way that they Oh, you're kidding. But, uh, yeah, it's a pain in the ass, but what can you do? I wasn't saying anything in of... it. I know, it's like everything is from PG-13 films. Uh, I don't know, if, I guess if you have a collective number of deaths all scrunched together, then <laughs> YouTube doesn't like it or something. But very yeah. strange. They're very frustrating. Yeah. I wouldn't say the critical doggo necessarily has a bright future on TikTok, but he's got a good good thing going on here, I think. One day I'm just going to start a stream and it's just the dog <laughs> sleeping. and <I'll> just <laughs> see how many viewers I actually get. <laughs> uh, but no, man, it's good to like it's good to see your channel as well starting to take off now because I feel like you've been kind of plugging away at this for a while and you're you're now actually getting the, the momentum behind you. And I'm pretty sure your past couple of videos have done really well, so it's good yeah, to see. I- I have to give a shout out to uh, the movie cynic for that who got in touch with me and we just had a little session working on how to just you know improve a couple of things and it, it's really sort of helped in that regard so i have to give a shout out to him nice oh, one man yeah awesome. we've had the movie cynic on ourselves haven't we mm. i believe we yeah. have indeed yeah uh well we need to have him back again sometime but so uh, yeah good stuff man uh next up we've got this this newcomer that some of you might have heard of, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, this is first time on the on the open bar, so hello, man. Yes. <laughs> what do you call a heel me. versus baby face? I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's heels. You gotta you gotta imagine there's an S there for some reason. You got so you gotta say <laughs> heels versus baby face. I thought it was heels. <laughs> Heel versus as baby face. Well, I was gonna say I was gonna do. I need to call you heels versus as baby face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next time we've got to ask you a question. That's easily done. <laughs> it rolls like, off the tongue. Down. Yes. And then, <laughs> a.k.a. Terence von Higginbottom. Oh, Perfect. that's where I know you from. There you go. Yeah. Famous. I know. It's been such a long time since I've streamed with you guys. So I know. Gosh, I've forgotten wow. what you looked like. We, can, we, can't, we can't make... We can't do that again. You know, we no, can't, we can't go like, this long um, again. You like little books or something, right? With pictures in them or something. I forget. Yeah. Uh, coloring books. That's the one. I collect, I collect coloring books, 
and, and I borrowed crayons from Disney. And I, well, and they I, got plenty, so I'm like that. I, I, and I color it, and that is <laughs> more sophisticated than anything Disney put out. That is true. so true. I don't uh, disagree. And I got no and, light. Yeah, yeah, what's happened to your neon? Is it because oh, of the flashing? I, the could I could turn this on if you wanted. But the, well, the one below is, is the, the control panel's gone. Oh, oh what, what? The no. light's just fucked up. Uh, the, it's, it's not the lights. Lights are fine. It's the control panel on the side. So I've ordered a, another starter pack, which has got like four more triangles so I can make some more shapes. And then, then I can switch out the uh, control panel. It should be okay. should work again. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a critical error. <laughs> oh yeah like uh and we other than well, that my cat <coughs> puking up all over my front room for some reason mm, yeah. oh dear ah it's just Beautiful. hairball it's just no i just i've had the dog I've, I've been looking after a dog for three days and then we just hoovered it you know just hoovered everything after he's gone hoovered everything made it nice and pretty and then Belle's come in and she's been like meow meow gave her some treats because she's been a good girl with the dog here she didn't kill it and then I gave her some treats, and then I just hear her go downstairs, and the next thing I hear is, ah, 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 and I was like, oh. Says like me on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Ooh. Cats. Gotta love them. Yep. Table. Or just, or just not go near them like me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, we've also got Tom from Midnight Sedge. Hello, Tom. It's good to see you again, my friend. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever it is where everybody is. Hello. Glad to be at the bar. Hey, man. Our resident expert in the stuff that goes on behind the scenes at studios. So uh, it's sometimes good to I us, can man. be. Yeah, uh, I hope you're going to be drinking tonight as well. I expect no less. I will try to spike my soda. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Good stuff. Well, we got everyone here. The bar is open, so I guess we should begin. the The first one I was going to talk about um, <laughs> before we uh, before we get on to um, the Witcher getting absolutely destroyed is uh, a little bit of controversy around the Queen Cleopatra uh, movie that's coming out. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, they made some interesting choices with uh, with Cleopatra. Um, she is now played by a black actress, and um, as you can imagine, the world didn't take it too well, uh, and there's been a lot of backlash to this this casting choice because, and it's my, it's my uh, understanding that the real-life Cleopatra was actually Macedonian Greek, and so... She wouldn't mm -hmm. be. She wouldn't be African. She would be more or less white. It should be Mediterranean at the very least. Um, but it's interesting because the director had some interesting uh, responses to this controversy. Uh, she said, uh, and I'm just going to quote her here. Um, yeah, Queen Cleopatra director uh, Gav, sorry, Garavi spoke out on the political backlash uh, to the docu series. Garavi cited Elizabeth Taylor's iconic portrayal of the ancient queen in the 1963 epic Cleopatra, which was the most expensive film ever made at the time, and its influence in helming Cleopatra. So she said, I remember as a kid seeing Elizabeth Taylor play Cleopatra. I was captivated, but even then I felt the image was not right. Was her skin really that white? Uh, she's told uh, an op-ed for Variety. With this new production, could I find the answers about Cleopatra's heritage and release her from the stranglehold that Hollywood had placed on her image? Stranglehold? Now, yeah, so <laughs> what she's essentially decided to do is remove one stranglehold and place a completely different stranglehold on her because, uh, again, you're not being accurate. And you could you could make the same argument, um, say you wanted to have someone play Genghis Khan and you chose like a black actor for that instead of uh, an East Asian actor. Or Jod Wayne. Um, yeah, I was, was going to say, say and if you get, if you get <laughs> I know, that's what I was leading into, if you get criticism for it and say, well, John Wayne played him back in the 1960s, and it's like, yeah, and everyone recognizes that that was ridiculous as well by today's standards, but that doesn't make what you're doing any better. It's just like you're comparing one bad thing to another. And so it just seems like an absolute years cop years ago as well. Yeah. You did this 60 years ago. You've just answered your own question. You've just literally answered your own statement. Well, I've got uh, Jada Pinkett Smith as the uh, as one of the producers behind this. So she's a mm -hmm. incredible person to be respected. And this uh, this the, this uh, director isn't she like Iranian or something? So she doesn't have any particular stake in it. And then you've got a lot of Egyptian people actually complaining and saying, "No, this isn't representative of, of our culture as well." And you've got it wrong. 
So you managed to piss off and alienate pretty much everyone uh, in the name of of this fantasy that you have. So the irony is, it's not it's not just uh, complaints from Egyptian people; it's uh, actual lawsuits as well. Yeah. Um, there's one <laughs> yeah, here yeah. from Shit, really? Egyptian lawyer Mahmoud Al Simari filed a complaint with the nation's public prosecutor to request that Netflix be blocked in Egypt due to the promotion of Afrocentric thinking. Uh, including slogans and writings aimed at distorting and erasing the Egyptian identity. Two petitions to cancel Netflix's Queen Cleopatra circulated with more than 88,000 signatures obtained. Wow. Well, well it's that's possible you should file a similar lawsuit uh, against Mel Gibson. That's more well, than people are going to watch the show, right? <laughs> you know, it's pretty sad when we live in a world when a movie called Cocaine Bear is more historically accurate than a Cleopatra document. <laughs> well, the, the irony is Elizabeth yeah. Taylor's more accurate than Jada right? Pinkett Smith's. That's the irony of it. No kidding, right? Well, and, you know, yeah, we were saying this, like, Gal Gadot, her version is probably, like, she probably looks more like what the real Cleopatra looked like. Yeah, yeah I would say so. Fitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, the, the, I think apparently the real Cleopatra wasn't even that bra. Like, <laughs> she was apparently, a bit plain. Yeah, she, was, she probably wasn't that if you see like a recreation of face, she wasn't that attracted that which we would call like classically attractive, but apparently she was. She drove the men crazy. She, she, was, she was really good great with the bounce. She had a good bounce. Yeah. yeah, she yeah, she'd she play really Xbox with you and shit. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Get beers and fart, and you'd be like, "Fucking hell, this girl's real." Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, the the myth of her being uh, extraordinarily beautiful that was like basically exaggerated upon uh over the centuries um but yeah the real life cleopatra apparently was described as quite homely looking and fairly plain <laughs> but like extremely intelligent and interesting described as quite handsome <laughs> like... back then pickings were slim <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Very handsome woman probably it's like, well, she had all her own winter. teeth so what do you ex what, what do you want you know <laughs> yeah standards were different i suppose no but, that's the uh, thing she was supposedly more of a <clears throat> more of a politician than anything that used her womenly ways to get <laughs> what she wanted that way till it didn't work out for wow. her anymore. Yeah. yeah. Hey, huh. But yeah, that's the, that's the great saga of Queen Cleopatra. So like you say, as I think probably more people signed the petition than are actually going to bother watching the show. So well, oh, well, Netflix it have it down as a uh, historical fiction. Right. And the, I mean, it I is, think really. the, it's like... the director themselves said that this is our version so they What's even their themselves, yeah they're true essentially yeah they said you know <laughs> this is this is our uh it's it's revisionist history we're seeing it all over the place we saw it with Anne Boleyn uh mm -hmm. we're gonna see it with more historical characters these people are gonna want to rewrite history in their in their indoctrine uh just picture know. it the trailer ending with like Cleopatra's <sighs> back and she's there with a gun like <laughs> <laughs> Like she rises up out of her tomb, you know. Like, yes, <laughs> queen. Go. She's going to reestablish the Egyptian Empire. Cleopatra's come back from the past. And she's going to destroy the future. Let's go. Got to get out of here because you have the you have the Mark Antony's baby. That she's going to save the world. Oh my god! Of, uh, well, like, it didn't, it didn't they do the... to protect Sarah Connor from Cleopatra? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do, 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 Didn't do, they do, do the do. same the same kind of thing with the woman king? Where yeah, yeah. again, <laughs> it's like this this horrible like warlord tribe that enslaved their own people are now portrayed as the good guys, and it's yeah. like it's I just mean, like that Mitchell and Webb sketch. It's like, huh? Oh, yeah. least, that's that's a, but at it's least that's be being portrayed fair. as a movie, though, right? It's, oh, go ahead. Sorry, it's well. rare to get a historical retelling that doesn't embellish and maybe ignore some atrocities. So I don't know what you're talking about, Maul, where Braveheart was 100% accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but that's in what in lies the issue, right? Like, you see Braveheart, you see The Woman King, you know they're fictionalized movies of historical events. Uh, you see the word documentary over there, because this is actually the second season of a show uh, under the title of African Queens. And, mm -hmm. and the first season they did, which was an actual African queen, there's a ton of African queens nobody's ever heard of. So what do they do for the second season? They pick one of the most well-known in history, and then they decide to controversially mess with it. Just and they, they know exactly what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like you know, this was a conscious effort 
to get some attention for this show. I guarantee you that's what the that, that's what this whole thing was. And if it wasn't for that, nobody would care about this show. Yeah. The, the weirdest one for me will still be Vikings, where you had a, a black actress as an 11th century Danish Viking. That one will always take the cake. Totally historically accurate. I'm you you sorry, made a I really go. good I, video I about that. I didn't realize Echo Chamberlain was a bigot. I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do I leave yeah. this place? I can't no, honestly, honestly, you, you, you made a good video play. about that one. Like, talking about the... What's that? He said, "How do I leave this place?" And I was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I scrolled well, over. I normally see remove. I can't even remove myself unless I just. <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave. We won't let you. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, the only person who should be able allowed to be doing any kind of historical fiction is Quentin Tar Tarantino and Quentin Tarantino only, because at that point, that nobody else seems to be able to do it right. Well, he just goes into like alternate history stuff. Like, exactly, you know it's you know, bullshit like... at that point, right? Like you're like, oh, clearly, like, <laughs> like especially or, uh, once upon a time in Hollywood with the Manson stuff, right? But he's yeah, not yeah. trying to hide it. He's he, he's like, this that's is, my this point. Is, yeah, you know, yeah, it's ignoring uh, you know, inglorious bastards and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's um, like it's straight up. We're just having fun with this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're taking yeah. a we're taking a bit of history and we're just playing with it and having fun. The, yeah. There was a really insidious quote from like a BBC guy who was talking about this, and he said make? something to. It might have been, yeah. A real BBC guy. A real BBC guy. It was Gary. Yeah. Uh, he's, yeah, Gary was like, how do I open this fucking door? <laughs> I dropped the quote. key when I was leaving the house. Now I got to go back yeah. and get it. Now I'm stuck uh, on no, this they, his quote was along the lines of, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing it slightly, but um, we are not going to show history as it was. Uh, we're going to show it through the lens of the modern world that we live in. And in a, in a sense, we're showing it as we wish it could be. So that we can uh, we can raise people with the correct attitudes uh, towards history, and I just thought, wow, wow, that's that's mask off stuff right there, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Did he just realize what he said? You think? It's, I I don't know. I mean, I I think he was pretty <laughs> straight up about what he was trying to accomplish with that one. You go, all right, like, Adolf. You know, well, do Adolf. History as it should have been. I would just be like, well, yeah. everyone's happy and dancing, playing video games well, with flowers. He was obviously he was obviously <laughs> speaking about it from the context of like, um, you know, diversity within within populations and stuff. So like, you know, if we're gonna do a drama set in medieval England, yeah, of course, like fifty percent of the people there are gonna be black or East Asian or whatever. Like, yeah, that's that's what we see in London, so that's what we're gonna see in this medieval village, and it doesn't matter if it's accurate or not because this is what we wish it could have been. Um, but then the problem is, like, there. It's almost like their hope is, well, the young impressionable generation coming up who watches that stuff will just assume that's how it actually was. Um, and that's then, the hope. Yeah, that so, is the hope. That's the plan. That's why they turned Anne Boleyn black. They said it themselves. They said it's because we we think it's more relatable to young people to see a black woman. And it's I mean, how, how much? Which means yeah, that I mean, uh, it's the quality of the actress supersedes any other notions like context or um, historical accuracy. Yeah, <laughs> that's a weird one. I I mean, like, how often is it? Do you think just a cynical market employee to generate some controversy that will make people more interested in whatever generic piece of garbage you've made? And how much of it is the sinister? Like, yeah, we're trying to just straight up rewrite history. I think a little bit from column A, a little bit from column B. Yeah. It would be pretty stupid to think that you're going <laughs> to be able to rewrite history with a movie. Like, you got to get real lucky to have a whole audience take your movie to be what happened in history. It does happen. I want to I wanna make sure that's, that's well, out there. Because um, people, the... people think Wakanda is a real place sometimes. That's, I was actually, <laughs> that was going to be one of my three examples. So it was going to be that one. It was going to be what Jurassic Park did to everyone's general knowledge of dinosaurs, right? Because... <laughs> Everyone draws from that movie, and that movie they worked really hard on it, but they have since said like, "Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff wrong." Um, but still, people that's the, to the point where if you make a dinosaur movie, you want to use how the dinosaurs look in Jurassic Park. You don't want to use modern like assessments of how they look or whatever. Even though I think they look pretty badass, regardless. And then there's like, you know, Braveheart was brought up earlier. I think a lot of people would be like surprised mm -hmm. to learn. Some of the, I, remember, I think it was a YouTube video that I watched. That I was like, "Oh shit, that sounds that sounds a little bit different compared to the film." Not that I took yeah. the film to be one hundred percent, but you know, there were there uh, were massive, massive inaccuracy. People living who weren't even yeah. alive uh, at the time. Yeah, and hundred years different. 
right? Yeah. Like that. I just, I yeah. just, even though it happens, I just love the, the fucking arrogance. The like, I'm putting out my movie, and so I, here I go changing history. <laughs> like, like uh, good luck with that. Is it the woman? Well, I, the I woman think, he yeah. bangs in it is she would have been like 13 at the time as well. <laughs> well, the the princess that uh, that gets interested in him late in the movie, who's like the the wife of whatever the the prince of Wales. Uh, yeah. In the movie, she's like I don't know, late twenties. Uh, in reality, she was about eight. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it takes on a very sinister edge then, <laughs> when you think about that. But the, the, when you were talking there about like, oh, people aren't that easy to manipulate with modern media and stuff. I just thought the example I was going to give you was um, from the, the the trailer we watched the other day on BBC, where we now live in a world where we have five yeah. second trailers or trailers because people have such low attention spans. That they can't even process a trailer. Drinker, are you still with us? Drinker, buddy? the Terminator's <laughs> got you. The Terminator's <laughs> coming through. Oh, uh, like you can uh, get a trailer. If like, if you're not, I, I will repeat <laughs> it in, in a more. I'll do it in a more concise way then. Uh, yeah, we live in a world now where you have five second trailers for the trailer that you're about yes. to watch, <laughs> uh, and so like yeah. yeah, people can't even have the attention span to process a, a two minute trailer. They have to have a trailer for that because this is the TikTok <sighs> generation that it's doesn't actually think shit. about anything. I do hate uh, that, thing, but I'm so, pretty like, sure. How, that... how, We've talked about this before, like the the theory, because I haven't looked into it, but I remember a friend of mine coming up with a theory that the idea is that those are the same videos that get cycled in for ads, and ads often have the five second wait before you can skip, so they show you the whole thing yes. in five seconds. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Like they're yeah. designed to look at people who are like, get out of my fucking way. They're like, no, look, Batman, Supergirl, blah, 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 blah. and you're like, oh, <laughs> don't hit the skip yet. <laughs> There's cool stuff coming. Please just pay attention. No, I think that, I think Mahler's accurate on that, but yeah. There must have been people in the multiplexes, like thick people who watched Inglorious Bastards and thought, oh my god, they killed Hitler in a theater? Uh, those people exist. <laughs> it is unfortunate, yeah. but those people exist. Yeah. I guess it's ironic that Mel Gibson uh, actually made a relatively historically accurate um, film about uh, the passion of the Christ, considering his views... His, uh, interesting views on the Jews. He actually kept it pretty legit. Interesting so, views. Yeah. <laughs> well, quite yeah. sugar tits. <laughs> they were, uh, yeah, they were quite, they were quite extreme. Um, it just depends how drunk he is when you when you catch him, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. His uh, Oksana rants, uh, which is ranting to his Russian wife on the phone. Those are uh, those are just great to listen to in their own right. Well, the best part is, is Kanye made anything Mel said probably lame in comparison. So. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, most people forgot about that. At least, yeah, Mel Gibson had alcoholism to blame. Yeah, <laughs> not not Milo Inopolis and Nick Fuentes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, what's Kanye's excuse? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just just straight up insane. I think at this point, well, you kind of not heard much about him for a while now. I, don't know I wonder why. Radio silent. Yeah, well, Jonah Hill brought him around. You know, he understands now. So. Yeah. You didn't hear that? He watched a Jonah Hill movie, the the You People movie. Oh yes, Netflix. that's right. And it made well, him change his okay mind the on the whole now. Jewish thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. I think he might have been the only person who watched that movie, to be fair. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's gone oh. from DIFCON, DIFCON 3 down to DIFCON 1, I guess, with the Jews now. So he's, he's kind of tempering it. That's mm. good. I mean, to be fair, like Mel Gibson, for, for all that stuff, like it basically derailed his career for a good decade. You know, mm, that, almost uh, two that now. did a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, you could argue he's never really recovered from it, has he? He's Not beginning quite, to start yeah. to get back in at the minute. Starting to, like, hopefully Lethal Weapon 5 happens and it's a success because I think that might be his key back to to the mainstream stuff, yeah. But, like, uh, that Santa movie one he did a couple years back was amazing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, he's due for a comeback. I he's going to be on um, age, is he now? Is he mid-60s? Something yeah, like that, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I like the one with the uh, the MMA guy. Uh, oh, the one to just come out this last year, the the Silent Night one or whatever. No, no, no. The uh, the one that went up on Amazon uh, about the time the time blip. The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it called? It was like the the... Watch on the Line. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it was uh, he played the villain in that. Um, oh, I don't know. That it was the guy one. who played uh, Crossbones in uh, oh, boss level. Boss level, yeah. I, I like that. Oh, I thought yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was a fun, oh, okay. just a fun popcorn uh, 
fun popcorn flick. That boss level was fun. I liked it. Yeah. I think Frank Grillo was really good in it. Yes, um, that's it. No, the Frank Grillo, yeah. And he's uh, yeah, for a guy who's like fifty six or fifty seven, like dude's ripped. It's insane. <laughs> I need his drug guy. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the, weird, just to tie up the, the Cleopatra thing, uh, so you've got, it's not the usual binary thing of like, a, you know, um, a conventional audience complaining about it being too woke. This is like a, a, an, an, the Egyptian population. So they can't push back against that and say that, the, you know, there's a racist reactionary pushback. And then you've got the Moana thing where the potential actress wasn't Hawaiian enough, especially. So it's kind of getting to the point where yeah. we can sort of step back and watch all this other stuff happening, which is kind of a different layer to it now, or a different element to it. Weird. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're right. Oh, no, sorry, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, I mean, the the uh, the casting uh, for the Lilo and Stitch, they casted a oh, yeah, Lilo and Stitch girl yeah. to to play. A Hawaiian girl, yeah, and apparently that wasn't. She wasn't. It's not very sensitive. She wasn't dark enough. She wasn't Hawaiian enough. Whatever that, <laughs> whatever that means in today's day and age. Well, what but I got an means... education on was is the difference between people who are actually native to Hawaii and those who move there and are claimed to be Hawaiian. That's the big difference. Mm. I know. Um, it's it's funny because chat's going nuts right now debating whether this is the real Mr. Beast. Uh, somehow I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If in oh my god, cool. we should totally bring him in. Yeah, <laughs> come bring him in. Come on. What's what is it, yeah. Mr. Beast? Go to the emails. All right. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's yeah. 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 <laughs> Mr. Beast. Uh, it's funny you bring up Lilo and Stitch. I don't know if uh, this is segue enough to be like. So there are. There are changes being made to all kinds of movies that get updates and stuff, and uh, there's been there's been a little bit of a stir about more, more information has been released about the characters and the way they look in the Little Mermaid. If um, oh yeah, if you're interested, I was gonna say I've got I've got everything ready now, Drinker. It's gonna it's gonna be great to showcase just how much trouble we're in. Are you are you <laughs> able to throw it in so that I can show it to everyone? Well, we'll start with this. This is a character called Scuttle in the uh, original film. That's that image. And then the follow-up is how he's going to look in the new film. And just what do you guys think in terms of the comparison there? I think that one of them is much more expressive. I wonder if you can tell which one that might be. If you can give, uh, the, give it the I'm old sure. Oh, sorry. I thought you'd put it in the backstage area. So, yeah, I'll just show it this way. Fair enough. I've got, got three examples here. This will be the start. The thing is, because I'm not even hyper familiar with Little Mermaid, but um, when you see stuff like this, you start to get a little bit concerned about like what you're in for. Right, you just showed off all your porn tabs. Yeah. yeah, well, what can I say? So that's the original. That's the original. Right there. Yeah. Very nice. Right. Yeah. Like <laughs> and daring, uh, sweet, lovely. And. Ooh. <laughs> oh my God. What the hell is that? <laughs> Are you kidding? What the hell is that? <laughs> Nightmare I've theory. seen plenty what? of seagulls. They don't look nothing like that. Okay. This is this is the problem that you get when you you try to anthropomorphize animals, but you do it in a photorealistic way. It's the same problem that you had with the Lion King, where they've got these weirdly inexpressive faces because they're animals. Right. You know, they, they don't have that kind of lovely uh, like hand drawn uh, style where you can really give them good facial expressions and you can convey a lot of emotion. They're just animals and it looks weird. Well, it's kind of the Sonic a... problem, right? You can't go too realistic with some of these things, or it just looks too nightmare fuelish. Yeah. Well, at we least got, we know actually, what a seagull should look like. Sorry, we've got we've got more. Yeah, there's more coming. You guys may right, you because that's the one people are less familiar with. The people right. more familiar with is Sebastian. You, oh you dear, guess we remember the crab, right? For, uh, first image, of course, is how he uh, how you may remember him. <laughs> look at him there, all nice, nice and uh, relatable. And then we've got. Oh wait, uh, is this supposed so to be? Have you sent it? Yeah, yeah, they're both ready to go. Uh, hold on. Oh, that's you've just sent me the same somebody, Sebastian. I was gonna say, I think he wants somebody to share. Oh, it. I have the same one twice. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. Those are the two. Uh, okay. So, yeah, did, did you see the first one? Yeah. No. no we didn't. Uh, okay. There we go. Well, there we go. <laughs> that's, 
So well, for first, relatively expressive, that one. Sweet, yeah. charming, nice. endearing. Yeah, yeah you and might And then we well. have this. <laughs> when I saw this poster, it's like, okay, so this is a joke, right? Like, <laughs> what have they done to my boy? They my boy. <laughs> I mean, that, that's uh, the thing that scuttles over a corpse in like a Jaws film. It's horrific. Well, it just oh. makes you think of the Crab King from um, from House of the Dragon, yeah. just <laughs> eating people slowly. Just, yeah. Then we have probably the best in terms of oh, illustrating the problem. Flounder, the character from. Little How Bit do you mess up Flounder? Yeah. Again, expressive little character. Oh, All right. Again. Nice. Yeah. Again. Look at that little guy. And then, you, and then what did writing? they do? <laughs> <laughs> he just looks so sad. Well, I would say Fuck he looks a little planet. bit a little bit something else, but yeah, okay. This what? movie has just got disaster written all over it. Why did it's they like... do that? <laughs> Oh, little geez. kids are going to want to leave the cinema. Like, there's nothing appealing or sweet or. <laughs> be like, Dad, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. I think they. Well, uh, I mean, expectations in terms of how much money this thing's going to make. Uh, it's probably going to be controversial, to say the least. But like, The Lion King, that made a shit ton of money. Maybe this one will too. I don't know. I mean, but... Beauty and the Beast made over a billion. Like you say, Lion King made a lot of money. I don't think Aladdin did all that well, but. It, actually, I think it made a billion too. Did, oh, that, I think, I think, did that break a million? Yes, yes, Seriously, I, I think did not think it did. I think we're doomed to this one probably doing the same thing. And uh, I think Valiant Renegade was right. I think he pointed out that it doesn't really matter because that the, they're going to bring the audience in knowing that they have the soundtrack and, and stuff like that. So they already know what they're getting into. And there's a lot of kids nowadays who just aren't into 2D animation. They just aren't. They call it old tiny animation. Fucking stuff. Yeah. Soulless dead-eyed fish. <laughs> oh, that I don't know, but uh, <laughs> looks more I mean, like a documentary than a film. I, I would love to see this thing flop, but I have a feeling it's going to make close to that stupid I billion just, dollar mark, like the rest. I can't of stop looking at it. It's <laughs> <laughs> which which yeah, eye yeah, do yeah, I look yeah. in though? That's the which it's just, well, yeah. well, it's like him, him and Ariel. Like their their eyes are both in different <laughs> areas, coach. You know, so they can like, at least see each other better. <laughs> Ooh. I even kind of just the part of the meme of it, just like Jacob Tremblay is this day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tempt as even more. Ariel, down here, everybody has an extra chromosome. Oh, <laughs> they got something. Definitely got uh, something. Yeah, that's that that movie, man. Uh, it's the the just the. The sheer antagonism towards it, like the hostility to it, it's just unlike anything else that they've done out done in terms of the animated um, remakes. Which, you know, um, like Beauty and the Beast didn't have this kind of backlash. Um, you know, Lion King didn't have this kind of backlash. Aladdin didn't have it. It's this is yeah, it's this been is it's been level. festering, but it's kind of interesting to think about, right? If you're a fan of Disney's works and you're like tired of the bullshit with Star Wars, especially after the latest Bad Lord season, you're like, I'm going to go watch some Marvel movies. And you're like, ah, oh, what the fuck? And you're like, Jesus, I'm going to go watch some Disney classics getting remade. Ah, oh. <laughs> Disney, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's so Just funny. I was, I was watching uh, The Making of Batman from 1989 yesterday. <laughs> And it was having an interview, and they're interviewing the cast, they're interviewing the producers, Tim Burton, director, and all of this. And it was so, it was like being in a different dimension because they were all talking about uh, how much respect for the characters, the source material, uh, and the, the word that kept popping up, uh, which Robert Meyer Burnett says is the currency of tomorrow, was authenticity. Authenticity, 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 and so to to listen to all of that and the way that they were they were being so um, respectful to the franchise and so respectful. And this is a bear in mind, of course, that this is a, a, a at the at that time, this was a, a funny book adaptation that they didn't know they didn't know what on earth it was going to do. They thought it might do okay, but you know you didn't put funny really too many funny book characters up there. So this was a massive, massive risk for uh, for Warner at the time. Uh, and now it's just like 
everything is as inauthentic as possible by the studios that own the, the franchises. And it's just such such a crazy turnaround. Phase one, phase two, phase three of Marvel, for the most part, authentic to the characters in terms of who what how they're represented in the comic and whatnot. Phase four onwards, everything's changing. Everything's changing. It's just, it's just as inauthentic as possible. The stories are inauthentic, uh, inauthentic as possible. The way that they portray the, the characters, inauthentic as possible. It's so, so bizarre now. It's mm -hmm. um, it's a weird problem that's been in and out for a while in terms of, like, you look at the Resident Evil films, right? Like, the, nobody's going to describe them as authentic, but no. they managed to be successful. Nope. It's like, so um, Marvel tried their hand on that shit. It's like, they're learning quickly that they can't uh, maintain the box office by <laughs> fucking around that much. So it's, it's kind of interesting how but it ebbs and flows, yeah? The, the difference is, though, that the, the Resident Evil movies had a budget of, like, 50 million each. Like, they were cheap films to make mm. for the most part. Um, so they didn't have to make that much in order to be profitable, whereas the Marvel movies are insane. They're like 200 million plus easily. Yeah. Uh, and so they were having to make like six, seven hundred million just to just to break even. Uh, so it's no wonder they're not hitting it anymore. Imagine if you're in 1989 and you just go to see this cool new Batman movie. And then uh, you put your kid down in front of the TV to watch this new film, which has called out, come out called The Little Mermaid. And then maybe you want to watch some TV and you look, uh, oh, the Star Trek, the next generation, there's Picard and they're all on the bridge. And you've got in a time machine to three decades in the future. You'd be wondering, what the hell is going on? <laughs> mm. It's like, stop, I'm going back. I just want to go back to where it was. I mean, I remember 89. I remember the whole hype and everything around Batman. And I was, it was a 15 in the UK and I wasn't 15. I was younger than 15 when it came out. And so uh, I, you know, I just kind of went when I went to the theater. Uh, I went, I think, to see it in Harrogate, spa town of Harrogate. I, I was there somehow, and uh, went in on my own. I think I think we'd gone to some to to a restaurant. I think we'd gone to Betty's for a treat or something. And I, I went in on my own, and I was like, "Excuse me, can I have a <laughs> ticket for Batman, please? I'm totally 15. I just like yeah whatever fuck I can't believe it was rated 15 there that's weird yeah just the violence or what uh yeah because um uh, what's her name Mick Jagger's ex-wife uh she gets she the gets Jerry, face. Jerry Hall, Jerry, yeah, Jerry Hall. Oh, she gets, okay. she gets yeah. the acid face and there's lots of Batman killing a lot of people in that I film. suppose yeah and lots of gas you know yeah. lots of people dying so there's a lot of that yes yeah, came out actually as a 15 in the UK I don't but think they rated that now I think it was relatively tame for for you know by today's standards, but yeah, I can. I don't see think there was blood. Like, I don't think there was too no. much or very minimal. Just, blood. just when, yeah, just when Joker's gun ricocheted off Batman and hit him in the face, but then it's just kind of he's covered up. Yeah, you know. Like, and I think when Batman just... punches him, he has a little blood come out of his mouth. Yeah, at no. the end, there's yeah, a, there's yeah, a bit yeah. of blood at the end with with all the smacking each other in the face, but. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, the height, the the absolute main, and then Batmania. It's real. It's mm. not. It's not revisionist history. It was real. Oh, it was huge. There was. It, it was, was palpable. Yeah, everywhere, everywhere you went, every <laughs> shop you went in, Batman cup, mm -hmm. Batman t shirts, yeah. pens, dildos, yeah. a whole lot. It was just everything and <laughs> He's anything. Not hitting. The bat dildo. No, if it had a bat logo on, people were buying it. It was everyone's walking around with the Batman t shirts on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you and had yeah Prince, who was at the absolute height of his cultural yeah, yeah, yeah. power. He did the yeah. soundtrack, and that was mm -hmm. super cool and sexy. And McDonald's had a tie-in as well, and promotional tie-ins and things. It was it was gigantic. Well, every kid wanted the Batmobile because it was so fun. All oh, the cool. toys, man. And you, oh, you, the well, toys, yeah. funnily yeah. enough, we talk about the Batman it. stuff. Believe it or not, the Joker stuff outsold the Batman stuff. You couldn't because, get your hands on yeah, a Joker figure for months because they didn't make enough because they underestimated. <laughs> oh, totally. The film. So Jack Nicholson, I, I Jack Nicholson was talking, and he was just like, "All my stuff sold out before the yep. movie even came out because yeah, there I was remember. more customers than there was product." My mom had to get a rain check for a Joker figure, and it took two months for me to get one. <laughs> oh. I, I love the the look of it because it's. You know, part of it's down to the age of it, and part of it's down to the inexperience of converting comic book movies or comic books into big budget movies. But it just it looks like it came out of a comic book. Like the 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 sets, the costumes, everything. It's so 
um, so evocative of the comics. And I know like it takes a lot of liberties in terms of storylines and stuff, but it just kind of so much of it just looks like it got lifted off the page of a comic book. It's it's a really cool aesthetic that movie has. Well, it takes I'm a lot of liberties, also. but at the same time it has the the beats of the comic in terms of you know they get the Joker's origin pretty accurate. They get the death of the Waynes pretty accurate, apart from they just transplant Joseph Chill to uh, to, to yeah. uh, Jack Napier. Yeah. Uh, so they they kind of get the major beats, and then they have the artistic license to play with other stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So at least they were trying trying to do that. Nowadays we've got. You know, heroes that get their fucking superpowers sent in the post. <laughs> hey, what the Order them on Amazon. That? Well, that was Ms. Marvel. Yeah. That was Ms. Marvel. She got her bracelets delivered in the post. That That's the point at which oh. you just give up and say, like, yeah. That's, that's what happens when you order a hero right, from Wish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You had just the right element of the cartoon aesthetic with a bit of grit and grime in there as well. And uh, that Tim Burton, Edward Scissorhands aesthetic mm. as well. So all those elements just alchemized so perfectly. In that Tim Burton's Gotham City was the perfect Gotham City. Yes. As far well, as that I'm was concerned. that was Anton it, first. Right. There's a, the, the architect of all that it was a chap called mm. Anton first. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. and he, he designed it all. Um, he was he unfortunately took his own life a few years later a couple of years later uh he was a very very uh tortured soul but uh yeah he he was the one that uh, tim went to uh to design gotham city and he just created this incredible uh gotham so much so that in the comics uh they did a storyline i think it was called destroyer uh a three-parter where there was a person going around destroying the more modern architecture of Gotham City so that the older, more gothic buildings, the Anton First-esque buildings, became yeah. more prominent again. Uh, that that was the, uh, that was, um, you know, sort of the legacy of, of that Gotham. But uh, yeah, Anton First was, oh, his his vision was incredible, absolutely incredible. Plus in a okay. kid's film, ostensibly, uh, Jack Nicholson had a real, not just presence, but a real menace to him. Like, mm. uh, this is the guy. So that was another well, you, important element as well. Well, you, you took like a really experienced, really competent actor that's, yeah. that's used to playing kind of off the wall, slightly insane characters, and you transpose him into this comic book movie uh, mm. and just absolutely turn him loose. And yeah, I mean, he, he turned in a great performance, you know? Um, you can obviously compare him to like Heath Ledger's Joker for sure, but uh, yeah, I think he still he brought a real menace to the character regardless. Well, he said when he was interviewed, he said, I, you know, because he's absolutely amazing actor is Jack Nicholson. And he said, I had to, to, to sort of work out how should I portray this to kids? Because kids are going to want to watch this, this movie. And he said, one thing about kids is they love a villain. And he said, the, the more bad you are, the more they like you. And that's what sort of made him go... OTT, because he was like, the more OTT I get, the more the kids are going to absolutely love this Joker. And it's true. Absolutely true. Yeah. Best Joker well, gives you a, The character gives you a license to do that, doesn't it? Because like, mm. you can be as insane as you want. Um, there was uh, one funny thing is uh, uh, in the last sequence where he's got to take uh, Vicky Vale, is it? All the way up to the top of that tower at the end. Yeah. And he kept asking Tim Burton, like, what is my motivation? Why am I going up to the top of this tower? <laughs> and Tim Burton would just say, just because just you want to get to the top of the tower. Like, that was the only instruction. Well, the so um, the history of that is that Jack Nicholson and one of the producers uh, went to see The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh. And uh, at the end of Hunchback of Notre Dame, it all goes to the top of the cathedral. Oh. And uh, this is mid-script. You know, this is, this is, they have the script and everything, and they're just like, this. This is how we need to end this film. We need to get it to Gotham Cathedral, and they need to kind of get up in a, in a, not no pun intended, quasi hunchback of Notre Dame, <laughs> uh, a quasi hunchback of Notre Dame moment where they literally just go up to the top, and then it they have oh. their. So that was actually yeah, um, inspired by Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, That's I like that. And that uh, been just... one of the more controversial elements of the film, right, where he kills Joker essentially. 
uh, for Batman. Yeah, but there. you could argue that he was just trying to like stop him from escaping, and it's just like, well, gravity kind of <laughs> killed him. Really. Why does everyone do that with all the Batman kills? Like, well, you could argue this is more of a uh, manslaughter at most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm pretty sure he killed all those. Moment. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he killed all those guys in the warehouse too earlier when he blew it up. But he just, so there's just a point where he's coming there. through with the Batwing and he just gets the fucking Gatling gun out and mows a bunch of them down. I know. Yeah. Well, there's that, there's that absolute, like, Chad who just has a go at Batman, like, in the, the bell tower and he ends up, like, throwing him off the edge. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I mean, honestly, I mean, to be fair, there's no point in, in either the first or the second Batman movie. I'm trying to remember in Batman Forever Returns, or uh, Batman and Robin, I mean. Uh, where he says anything like that, but I don't think he ever said like Batman doesn't kill or anything like that. That was never a part of that character. No, really. he, no, no. no Burton, yeah. yeah, Burton's portrayal was this Batman would kill flat he out. Definitely yeah. kills people. Well, and yeah, that and was mainly Zack because Snyder just said fuck it, he's a mass murderer. Now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, and I have read like the earlier versions of the script before they got to that point, and uh, and he didn't kill in some of the earlier ones. I remember, but. That also had Robin and some other things in it, but yeah, yeah. When they got to this point, Tim Tim Burton was really turned on by the Killing Joke and the Dark Knight mm. uh, Frank Miller comic. Yeah, Dark Knight Returns. So that's really where he drew more most of his inspiration from, obviously. So yeah, nice. Yeah, Robin well, was uh, Robin was actually legit going to be in it, yep. and uh, just the way that the because they they said even when he got a script. It's still kind of fluid. You know, a script is a blueprint for you to work off. Uh, and so they said he there was a, they, a whole specific moment where Batman was chasing the Joker on a horse. Uh, and the Joker was trying to get away. And the Joker actually went through the Flying Grayson's uh, performance and ended up, ended up setting it on fire. And his mum and dad basically fell flaming to their deaths. Uh, and then Dick Grayson went went out, joined Batman and to go after the uh, the Joker. But they said the way that the film was just beginning to progress, it just didn't didn't fit. So they they cut Robin out. Yeah. Well, let's, don't worry. Uh, let's add it in with Batman Forever. Yeah. Before we uh, before we move on awesome. to the. <laughs> Drink is going to get there eventually. Oh, the fuck nipple. it, I give up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's actually a but good wanted, segue to fly. You guys run the stream, fuck it. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to mention that. was the, the Gotham from the Schumacher movies. I like the part. Oh my god, it's really still going. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's Batman, what do you expect? You bring a Batman. Uh, Batman I'm the beast here. One thing about segues before you talk about, before you make a segue, notice me. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay well anyway before we move on to the next little bit uh allow me to just do a couple of uh super chats because they've been piling up and uh there's uh, a couple that have come in here first one we got is uh let's see if i can bring it up here uh three beer thunder he says drinker check out silverado 1985 western with scott glenn kevin klein danny glover brian dennehy <laughs> Jeff Goldblum and a very young <coughs> Kevin Costner. Damn. One of the more forgotten westerns, but will always be one of the best. Mm. It was like the template for Kevin Costner's uh, turn in Yellowstone, I suppose, back in the day. Um, but yeah, uh, Silverado. I feel like You've I've seen, seen it, it, but... I remember it. That's yeah, a good movie. I've never it's, seen it. it's when they were naming all the cast there. I'm like, yeah, that stirs a memory, but... Well, give me a brief rundown of the plot. Um, like Kevin Klein. Is, oh no! Uh, I mean, uh, Kevin Costner is a young buck. He's in prison and he gets broke out by his brother or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's they end up in the town Silverado where there's, you know, Jeff Goldblum, Kevin Klein, and all those guys. Danny Glover. Um, it's a good flick. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen it, check it out. I don't want to give too much of it away because it's. It, it's yeah, funny. It's really I I'm having trouble picturing Jeff Goldblum in, in a western. I almost want to see. It <laughs> he's one of the. Uh, he's one of the kind. Not the bad guy per se, but he is one of the more villainous characters <laughs> when, yeah. when i think of jeff goldblum in a western outfit i just think of um, buckaroo banzai when he just randomly shows up in in like cowboy garb <laughs> for no reason <laughs> well he does he does like, play I like a, to go with that a pompous rich guy so like he is kind of fitting in the role so it does work but like i just yeah. imagine yeah. Him in the, like in a posse of horses and they're trying to get away from some other villains he's going faster must go faster yeah kasdan directed uh, and wrote it from uh you know the guy who wrote uh, *Rage of the Lost Ark*, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, either way, it's worth checking out, I guess, because uh, well, I mean, thank you very much, man, for giving us a hundred dollar super chat as well. John Cleese too. 
John Cleese, Cleese isn't it? Yep. Wow, that is a weird bit of casting. I'm probably going to watch this film at this point. I'm just curious about it now. Oh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's such a it's such an eclectic mix of people. I'm just like, yeah, how the hell do these mix together into a western? And it's not like some kind of spoof or anything like this. This is a legit western. Hmm. No, I'm just saying it like the the weird combination of actors. This isn't any kind of like comedy. It's well, not like a, a it kind of started as a big chill reunion. That's why a lot right. of it is because Kasdan also made that. So a lot of the cast is from there. Uh, and Costner, this was his make good on that because he was in the big chill, but he got cut out. Uh, for those who don't know, right. he played the dead body in the beginning of the movie, <laughs> but there was actually some flashbacks and stuff that got cut out. But yeah. Possibly his best. You guys, were, uh, you guys were raving about 310 to Yuma a couple of weeks ago. So I, I sat down to watch it for the first time. It was, I thought it was so strange. Uh, because tonally, Russell Crowe's been arrested and he seems like this nice, smooth guy that you kind of like. And then he's manically stabbing someone to death with a fork uh, and a brutal kill. And then five minutes later, he's back to being a smooth, likable, charming guy that everyone kind of likes and the audience kind of likes. And then he shoves an old timer uh, off a cliff to his death which is horrific, and then five minutes later he's back being the smooth, nice, likable guy. It was such a weird tonal thing. Weird experience to watch. Oh, I mean, that all lined up to me, being that that's how he's able to control like a gang, but simultaneously isn't to be fucked with sort of thing. You know? I, guess. You, uh, I mean, the, the two pe the people he killed, he didn't kill them for no reason. Um, they they uh, The first one, I think, was uh, being a dick throughout like the, the whole opening of the like the movement, but then it's the the the, the old dude he throws off because he was wasn't he talking about um his mum or whatever? I need to rewatch it, but um uh Russell yeah. Crowe doesn't think he's in any trouble throughout that whole movie, but he does kill uh members of the little little group when he he's pissed off with them. That's what I remember anyway. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I'll do a couple more super chats before we before we move on. Uh, the first one's from Waylon Bacephus who says. This is this is an all time question here for all of us. Bucket of AIDS or gingeritis? <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, either way, you're you're screwed for life. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might go for the bucket. To be fair, uh, and we, he also said, uh, "Would you choose the Godfather or Goodfellas?" A more pertinent question. I might go for Goodfellas. Ooh. You know. Why don't you make me pick one of my kids while you're at it? Yeah, uh, tough one. It's an easier. I, I know which one I'd rather watch again. Put it that way. Mm -hmm. I think it'd go for. I'd go for Goodfellas. Mm. Uh, this one from Joshua Levesque is for you, Muller. Uh Seen Northman yet? We need an EFAP for it. I'm afraid not. That's one of those ones I got to get on at some point. I don't know. Slipping by. Um, it's good, especially because I, I like, like Eggers' work as well. So I should get on it. It was better than I no. thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's uh, it's less mental than something like The Lighthouse, but it's still got elements of that to it. It's like got a lot of surreal moments, um, you know, almost like dream sequences where he's off his tits on mushrooms and stuff. And yeah, yeah it's it's pretty good. I liked it. Um, Andre Heisen's... was saying it's. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Go no, no, on you go. On you go. I say Andre was saying it's based on the story that Hamlet's based on, basically. Mm -hmm. And it has yeah, it you feels a lot like a Conan movie, basically. It's really good. It's it was better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. I, I didn't really see the parallels with Hamlet until someone pointed it out, and then I was like, oh, ah, yeah. okay, yeah, I, I get why well, the story is. Kind of or whatever, it. too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh Chuxenhausen says, Drinker, I'm so glad that you started watching Tulsa Kin, and I pray that Az starts watching it too. I love how Sly hands people hundred dollar bills to do tasks for him. I say that those scenes could be used as a running gag for answering plot holes. Do you agree? Um, I mean, yeah, basically it's it's great how he just throws money around and if he can't bribe people, then he just beats the shit out of them. So, yeah, he's a great <laughs> character in that. I like Sly I in, in Tulsa King. It's great. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. And as, you need to watch it, apparently. I know. Maybe. Gary, Gary badgered me into doing it. So... Um, Mr. Lucas says plans for open bar 50 hopefully many guests as which hot toy should I get when available Darth Vader or Tobey Maguire from Spider-Man uh, which Darth Vader uh, the um, the return of the Jedi one that they're going to do the new one or um, are you talking about the the Anakin Kenobi one with the smash mask 
I would get. I, I, I think the uh, the Darth Vader, uh, the new Darth Vader doing from Return of the Jedi. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Taco Puti says the Flash looks fine. Things I like and things that I don't like. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. Yeah. I think we all like Keaton, but yeah, doesn't make it mm. a good movie, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, cirrhosis of liver says keep up the good work drinker and gang thank you <laughs> and lucky. McPolton face says can you name everyone in the background picture is that paw from rags or the critical doggo also everyone subscribe to echo chamberlain he's a word master oh nice thank you so much and uh yeah can we name everyone in the backgrounds i mean from memory yeah we've got the paw from rags we've got rob uh we've got dankula we've got gundam as and Gary, um, right there. as and Gary, yeah, and we got it Tatiana really dancing in the, the background there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Fringy, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's all the people that we've got so far. So I feel like we might need an updated one. Yeah, know, the bar's gonna get some bigger, more put in there. Yeah, um, we need to get the guy commissioned again. Um, but yes, anyway, I'll, I'll do more super chats later on. But for now, um, yeah, the next one I was gonna look at was a couple of days ago. The Witcher Season 3 released their first teaser trailer, and the reception wasn't exactly stellar. Uh, at oh. the time of us doing this stream, uh, it's sitting at 2.2 million views from two days ago. Um, it's had 51,000 upvotes and 196,000 downvotes. <laughs> that is a brutal ratio. Uh, you're pretty much, what, 4 to 1? down i was kind yeah. of interested in this to what extent do the studios factor in or pay attention to the those ratio dynamics do you think they completely blow it off and ignore it or do you think they at some <laughs> level they actually have they, to? they've got to be aware of it i mean surely it must be some kind of market indicator it's got to be like they couldn't just they, they surely they, i mean they could blow off the comments like the, the people saying like you know um, I was shaking when Henry Cavill picked up the lightsaber and said it's Morbin time, but yeah, <laughs> the the actual like mass of people downvoting it, that's got to mean something to them. I would hope. Otherwise, what's the well, point in releasing this stuff? If you look at the Witcher Season 2 trailer, the ratio on that is 8.6 million views, 329,000 upvotes, 5.3k downvotes. So that is 96 odd percent, whatever, let's just say 96 odd percent thumbs up. This is 20 percent thumbs up. There is a massive guess, difference between two. I, can, I can't even believe season two got such a positive reception. Well, like this the is trailer, the trailer. I don't. <laughs> well, I know, but then I don't think people came out of season one thinking, damn, that mo that uh, show was awesome. I can't wait for season two. Like, that was that was already a show with problems. I think so. Then. But, he, but a lot of people were just like, oh, it was, it was good, decent, Susan T. I was like, are you fucking nuts? That was... I guess the, the, uh, the inverse must be true as well. Like, if you're Disney, the gigantic corporation... And you put out a um, a Peter Pan trailer, and it's only getting what fifty thousand or whatever likes. That's such a minuscule proportion of people who are actually thrilled enough to actually make that decision on YouTube to upvote it. So that must also be worrying when that kind of minuscule statistic on that side uh, emerges. Mm -hmm. so I how mean, much can they sacrifice God. in terms of reputation and critical acclaim for money? How long is that going to work out for them? Where's the money? Well, as we were just talking about, there's. Uh... Oh, sorry, we're talking about Witcher. My bad. <laughs> yeah. I guess you guys would know better than me. How how does that do for money? Uh, how does that do for engagement overall? Because they got ah. to three seasons. That's something. Yeah, but was that contractually obligated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deal? Well, that's what I mean. Is you guys would know actually. Say, I know that season two. Um, I mean, even Lauren Histrich was was not happy with the reaction of season two. So well, it must it must have done a lot a lot worse than they they imagined. Imagine losing. Oh, she wasn't happy. Pass me the era. fucking violin. Maybe you should have better, made a better show, love. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. She tried uh, to engage in conversation with with people like quartering and whatnot, and then the angry the angry mob on Twitter was just like you can't speak to him, and then she was like you're yeah. right, and she disavowed and all that. Mm. Yeah. 
So let's just go through Indeed. the checklist. You've got uh, a group of writers who weren't into the material. Yeah. You've got a lead actor who was disgruntled about the whole process. Uh, you've got the author of the books who the best he could say was, <laughs> oh, I've seen better, I've seen worse. So he's not into it. And then the audience isn't into it. So <laughs> nobody's into this show. So how do you nobody get Yeah, point? nobody wants to... <laughs> nobody wants to make it. Nobody wants to watch it, and apparently nobody yeah. wants to be in it either. Like Henry Cavill's leaving. Mm. Um, this this could be the the final season. If they if they make season four and it gets released, I'll be shocked because I think they're going to be uh, they're going to have appalling ratings for this one. I honestly, everyone think knows. That this... No, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, everyone knows Cavill's out. Uh, everyone knows that there's no real future for this one, and it's just. It's dead in the war. It's a dead show walking. Yeah, at least Blood but Origin how... was good. Oh yeah, we got that, didn't we? That that's obviously damaged the brand as well. Like you released garbage like hope that. So. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you shouldn't be allowed to get away with have... releasing something like that. Yeah, I mean, you could have sort of coasted by with the first two seasons, but when you've got that absolute dog shit, uh, it's just it's destroying it. So the uh, beauty of Blood Origin. Is Blood Origin is them trying to make an original bit of content in the Witch universe that just shows how yeah. fucking shite they are. Yeah. Well, well this I is the show they isn't... wanted to make. This is what they always wanted to do, but they were they were hamstrung by like some kind of semblance of source material that they had to stick mm. to. They probably had Henry Cavill kicking up shit behind yeah. the scenes as well mm. about them deviating from it. And this was their chance to show us what they could do when they were unfettered mm -hmm. by creative yeah. restraints. And look what Probably they produced. Maybe we could get rid of yeah. the source material. If we can just yeah. find a way. Yeah. Well, and but I, I love this thing. Story. Not, just, um, not just substituting Cavill. So you get a discount. And Liam Hemsworth, they get a discount Henry Cavill, okay. who's also a discount Hemsworth. <laughs> so it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just going to bring that up. Like, he doesn't come in until season four, right? Because Cavill yeah. shot season three. And I'm surprised they even went that far at this point. I figured they just end it because traditionally Netflix doesn't like to do more than three seasons. And the reasons is because the way they see it is if they're going to get an audience off a show, it's off that first and second season. If by that third season, they're not getting any new subscribers to Netflix, then it's a dead show to them. That's what took them so long to finally decide to uh, pick up Cobra Kai for season six. And I think that yeah. was just because Sony was threatening to do other things with it if they didn't. Uh, at that point, because they're like, well, we're done. We don't need any more. Uh, well, the actors not... get more expensive, don't yeah. they, with each passing season? That too. And... Yeah, and see, that's another thing, too, is like, it's like with networks, like the first three or four seasons are usually on the production company. Then if you decide you want to go further, then it's up to the network or Netflix or whoever to kick in more money after that, basically. Yes. And uh, yeah, like the, the revenue that you generate from the show isn't going to increase with each passing season. Uh, unless it's something crazy like you know a Game of Thrones or whatever, um, but yeah, with with most of these things, and particularly in this case with The Witcher, I don't think they're getting many people signed up. Nobody's going to sign up to Netflix at this point to watch The Witcher, especially not with season three. Like this is this show has died a death. Uh, it tried yeah. to be the next Game of Thrones, it failed miserably because the the writers can't write a fucking episode of tv to save their lives they hate the source material they don't understand storytelling and they just wanted their 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 like empowerment diversity higher casting uh above all else that was all they cared about and yeah they shot especially with the blood origin well. with uh one of the interesting things about blood origin was supposed to be the vast you know differences between those three realms but they just peopled the three realms with people who look exactly like everyone else in every other realm. Uh, so that was the problem with the diversity there. Well, we talked about this on Real BBC the other night, didn't we? When we were watching the trailer yeah. for it. And it was like this exact problem that Game of Thrones tackled it perfectly. You know, by mm. saying, hey, this is a crazy idea, right? But people who live in the far north where they, they it's cold and dark most of the time are probably going to look a bit different from people who live in the, the far south where it's hot and sunny all the time, you know? Uh, that's just kind of how human beings are. But no, like, in places like The Witcher, everyone is just, like, walking down the, the street of central London. Like, there's a mix of every different yeah. ethnicity, uh, yeah. you know, every race and colour and whatever, all mixed together. And so every place just ends up look like, looking like every other place. There's nothing to differentiate anything. 
So you never get a strong sense of what the geography of this world is. You don't know where anything is in relation to each other, um, partly because of that bad casting that they don't that they can't break away from, and partly because the writing's terrible and they they don't know how to world build to save their lives. Like I don't know about you, even having played the games and knowing the general setup of this world, um, I felt more confused after watching the show. Like I feel like it it took that knowledge and scrambled it. I, I, I can't imagine what it must be like for people who are coming into this blind, just having no sense of what the, the landscape of this world is mm-hmm. in the slightest. And it just gets worse as time passes. I think and then I you get this. Well, you have uh, the diversity in the in the immediate sense of, of ethnic diversity, but then you have like Rings of Power, Wheel of Time, Willow, um, this show, where it all just looks mono and interchangeable in a, in a larger, wider sense. All the landscapes look the same and all the characterization and backgrounds and extras all look the same. So it just merges into one bland mass. Yeah, the land yeah. mass. I don't know if part of it was right. just, you Big know. Square, that's it. That's the land. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like even, yeah, again, even with Game of Thrones, um, the, the lighting was different in different places. You know, if you were mm-hmm. in Dorne, it was very golden. It was You could tell that it was warm and stuff. Like and you're up in Winterfell, everything's grey and washed out. And it's like, okay, I get the sense of where we are. I, I know the climate's different. I know the look, the landscape is different. Uh, they they spent money to shoot on location in different places. Kind of feels like they cheaped out on The Witcher, and everything's just shot in like fucking Ireland or wherever they did it, uh, and everything just looks the same. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just you get no you get no sense. Of, I mean, geography is very important when you're when you're talking fantasy. You you need to see, particularly when a lot of these characters are traveling, because you need to see a world traveled. And when the world you're traveling looks identical everywhere, the people look identical everywhere, then it feels like you're going nowhere. You're physically yeah, going that's nowhere. Right. That's a good point. And, yeah. and so that makes it very dull, very boring. When you go to a different location, different filter, different lighting, a different people, it feels like a journey has happened, a journey has commenced. I think I yeah. know what they're going to do with the story. I think they know what they're, they're going to do the riots. At the end of season three, they're going to do the riots, and Geralt's going to get killed, and Yennefer's going to get killed, and then Ciri's going to take them away and bring them back. And then season four, when Geralt comes back, he's going to be Discount Hemsworth. Oh, so and that's how they're it. going to it's, do that. Because the whole thing is so amateurish; it it just looks like a CW show. And mm. yeah, I just I always remember that really petulant rant that you got from Yasky in season two. Where he, he meets this like guard who's like, oh yeah, I've heard some of your songs. Didn't like the one that skipped around uh, to different time periods and stuff. Um, it was really confusing. And then he does this, does this really like childish rant about how the guy's so stupid and he doesn't understand his artistic genius. And it's clearly yeah. just the writers absolutely vent in their rage at the yep. audience. Like, how dare you morons not understand our genius at work here? And it's like, no... You're idiots. You tried to do something really clever, but you couldn't do any world building, and so you couldn't establish any time periods that people could identify. So you just ended up with a confusing mess of a story because you guys are useless, incompetent hacks. Yeah. Don't yeah. blame it on us. You can't tell a story to save your lives. So uh, I haven't missed out, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just avoid the Witcher like the plague, man, honestly. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. A cavil's the only good thing, and he's barely in the fucking thing. Yeah, and he, you, you know, he's and he doesn't do any anyway. witchery. <laughs> there, it was funny because like you would get the occasional episode where it's like, oh, he's just got to kill a monster, and it felt like a little bit of a bottle episode. And those were the only good ones, where it's just like he's got to maybe solve a little mystery to find out where this monster came from, like who it turns back into when it's not in like monster form or whatever. Uh, and that's that's all right. That's very much reminiscent of the games, and I assume the books as well. Um, but yeah, it's whenever they try to tie it into a bigger overarching story. Um, yeah, I think season two, episode apart. one, isn't it? We go to the manor house. That was the yes. only one that I I thought was decent. Yeah, because it was that was exactly that. It was a it was a well inverted commas witch hunt monster hunt uh, a, a mystery to be solved, and it was and it was relatively interesting. And then after that, it just evolved into oh my god, series amazing. Yeah, 
Oh, you've got a witcher who doesn't uh, do any. Oh, you've got a witcher who doesn't do any monster hunting, and you've yeah. got uh, a Mandalorian who doesn't do any bounty hunting. So, uh, right. Yeah. And what do they both like have her. in common? Both babysitters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically. Both babysitters. You could tell. You could tell they were champing at the bit to get Siri into the action and make her like the strong, amazing girl who's the key to everything. Like oh. they just could not wait to do that. They gave her one little training sequence, which, to be fair, you know, they showed her struggle a little bit, and then become it's one day. So, she did it yeah. one day. Baby I like steps, how it was a... as baby steps. It's like, you know, we've got the tiniest little sliver of character development uh... there. It's like we're supposed to be grateful for that, I guess. It's it's better than uh, nothing. One thing they've got with the series is that they're dividing it in two. They're going to have like four episodes, then a long break, yeah. and then another three. Their planning is that they want to keep it in the cultural zeitgeist, like yeah. in Stranger Things season four or something like that. But everyone's just going to watch four episodes, completely forget about it, and then go, oh, yeah, there's another three episodes when it comes back home. So that's going to be its yeah. cultural impact. It's it's not a, it's not an event show. That's the thing. Like, mm. yeah, when Should something be. like uh, when Stranger Things comes back, it's like, oh, that's a big event. Everyone's excited to watch it again. Well, they, particularly now because it's kind of redeemed itself. Um, when Game of Thrones was in its heyday, everyone was excited for each new episode. It's like we're going to speculate about what's going to happen next, who's going to mm. die next. It was good stuff. This isn't an event. Nobody's talking about The Witcher. No one cares anymore. Yeah, we've moved on to better stuff, and particularly now we've got House of the Dragon. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know. It's a pretty decent show, and like Rings of Power, as as terrible as it is, again has overshadowed something like The Witcher, which is just small fry in comparison. And so it's just it's just buried beneath all this stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I just I I don't see it going anywhere. Well, maybe yeah. it will. Maybe it'll be super successful, and then it'll have ten seasons, and you'll be seen as wrong. Liam Hensworth is a revelation. Yeah. Oh, that'll, that'll be the headline anyway, regardless. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> He's so much better than Cavill and his portrayal as, of Jerry from Rivia, from Rivendell. Yeah. He gives us Jerry more, from uh, Rivendell. <laughs> Henry Cavill. He's more, who? Yeah, he's more emotionally demonstrative, which is what people have been crying out for with Geralt. We will yeah. submit. I want to see him cry and talk about his feelings. Yeah, he that's knows what his I hope role. From Geralt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even the posters, it's like, you know, Siri's really front and center and he's just kind of holding her, you know. Front in the and background. Center. Both posters. To both of the posters, she's front center, Siri. Yeah. Imagine my shock. Uh I'll do a I'll do a couple more super chats here, just while before we move on. Uh Taker six ten said you have to watch the trailer for Strange Way of Life, starring Pedro Pascal and Ethan Hawke. It's Brokeback Mountain Part 2, I guess, oh, yeah. but the trailer yeah. is bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Wait, why, the trailer did... the trailer? Gay, more, well, more gay cowboys. Yeah, the trailer did everything it could possibly do to push up to the edge of it. It might not be a gay romance. <laughs> it might not be. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Wait, so their hook is come, come to the cinema to see if they snog? Basically. Yeah. Will I'm they? Good. Won't they? I'm okay. I don't yeah, know. it's like it's like <laughs> you know what, man. I'm I'm not that <laughs> I'm invested. Fine. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with not knowing. Uh, Go for broke says, "Who's the better writer, Ryan Johnson or Michael Waldron?" Oh. The monkey. <sighs> <laughs> the critical doggo is the better writer. Yes, the critical doggo wins by far. <laughs> yes. So, Smokey, are you alive? No. Smokey. <laughs> I oh, hey, hey, yes. hey, 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 why did you bother me, man? I'm sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Chilling out. Huh. That's a trick question, true. Uh, so if you'd made it Jeff Loveness versus Michael Waldron, which is the Quantum Mania writer versus the MOM writer, I would take the Quantum Mania writer just because Ooh. there's like one joke in the film that made me go, huh. the holes joke. I was like, that was all right. And that's that's more than Waldron ever did for me. Oh, okay. God, that's, uh, I just I fucking sighed it. Yeah, but all right, we didn't have to watch Reed Richards get turned to spaghetti. We just had to watch Ant Man get turned <laughs> to spaghetti. Um, but uh, Ryan Johnson, like, oh, that man, he lives to like annoy an audience. <laughs> like, yeah, he's con <laughs> he's I'm about to say he's consistently annoying, uh, like watching Glass Onion or something like that. Every ten seconds is another reason to just 
uh, another shot of annoyingness that comes from it, in screenplay. It's the it's the smugness that gets you, isn't yes. it? Yes, <laughs> the smugness of it all. Yeah. No, we're subverting your expectations. We're so smart. We're smarter than you. Am I more excited to see Loveness writing Avengers or Brian Johnson's Knives Out 3? And it's like, fucking... Yeah, <laughs> it's new levels of pretentiousness. Uh, here's oh, one for us. Uh, John Smith says, Seen Psycho 2. It's surprisingly good. Um, I've, I've seen Psycho 1, and I've definitely seen Psycho 3, because I think that's the one where it's like um, a, a much older version of Norman Bates. Um, still played by Anthony Perkins, though, <clears throat> and he goes back to like confront his demons of his past or whatever. He's like conf he's uh, reformed. Yeah. I don't that's think four. I've seen Psycho. Oh, is that four? Is it? That's four. Yes, yeah. four. What the yeah. hell happens in three? Then Psycho Two it is Tom Holland's, uh, not the Spider-Man Tom Holland, but the director Tom <laughs> Holland, who did Fright <laughs> Night. And ironically, it is actually really good. It got good reviews at the time, and Psycho Three did as well. Psycho Three is the one that Anthony did direct himself. It's it's basically a, it picks up right where two leaves off. Four almost pretends like two and three never happened. It's kind of weird because right. um, four was actually made direct for cable for Showtime. But yeah, yeah if it's you got have that, not, it's got that feel to it. Yeah, if you haven't seen Psycho two and three though, I actually recommend them. They're better than you'd think, especially Psycho two. Hmm. Uh, it, it's it's an interesting twist because like the whole not to give too much of a way is like yeah it, it's it, it picks up twenty years later. And in Norman's being released from the hospital, and the whole question of the film is, is he cured or not? And and mm. there's some stuff going on in the background that really makes you oh. question that. Yeah, yeah, and I remember. Yeah, I don't want to yeah, give yeah. too much away, because yeah. it definitely has, like, one of those twists at the end. You're like, oh, snap. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it does tie in very well to the original film. The third one's just mm. kind of fun, right? The third one's just kind of fun, and it picks up where the second one leaves off. But, like, yeah, the second one is pretty good. And the fourth one, not nearly on the same one level, but kind of explores the relationship with his mother yeah. when he was a kid. Yeah, four is yeah. clearly where they got the idea for Bates Motel from. Yeah, the yeah, idea yeah. of going back to him when he was younger and seeing it all begin. Because yeah. he's on the phone, yeah. isn't he? He's on the phone on yep. the four to the DJ. Yeah, yeah it's with, like uh, it's, a, it's yeah. a radio radio call yeah. show, uh, isn't right. it? Yeah. yeah, that's right. I'm sure it's CCH Pounder who. I was just going to say, well. I think it's CCH Pounder. Yeah, has an amazing name. Yeah, right. Uh, okay, the next one is Marksman of 117B says, I need you to watch Unicorn Wars, 90 minutes animated film, now available on YouTube. Bambi, Apocalypse Now, and the Bible fused together into a compelling story of war. The trailer will hook you. 10 out of 10. Bambi and Apocalypse I, I don't, Now. I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, it's like, sometimes I hear things and I'm like, I, I don't know how to process that. <laughs> I've never understood unicorns. Like, they're so mystical and alluring and beautiful. It's a horse with a spike on its head. That's yeah, yeah they, they think they're all that. I can, <laughs> you know, they're nothing special. Assholes. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one anyway. of the fun wow, things I Wow, that escalated quickly. <laughs> 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 Fuck unicorns. We're done with them. No, uh, it's one of the yeah. fun things I thought about uh, the, the Shazam sequels that they, they had it that the unicorns were actually the assassins of all the other... Uh, um, mystical creatures, and that's they're actually meant to be feared and not <laughs> they're not good. Yeah. They're, I can, yeah, I can <laughs> like that. Funny. That's kind of funny. I thought like they're the worst of all of them, <laughs> like, yeah, and they're, they're even described as cruel and malicious and stuff. <laughs> cruel and malicious, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just toying with people with their horns, you know, <laughs> before killing well, them. It makes you wonder why would they give an animal like that just one horn? Well, there's your answer, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, here's one for you, Moller. Moller, do an unbridled praise for 12 angry men. Do it now. Oh, Fringy's already done uh, a video going over like the big big good bits of that. I would recommend. He's, uh, I think Fringy did a really video. good video. I liked his video, yeah. Yeah, he just talks about how some of the more overt stuff in terms of the differences of the characters, but the, the more subtle ways that they uh, push each of them and how they interact with each other. 12 angry men. Fucking go watch it. It's a really good movie. It what do you think really of good. the uh, 97 version? I, ask, like I just watched it. both of them. Oh wow! Okay, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I, mean, uh, I, I William understand Friedkin it's not. It. Yeah, I understand it's not as well regarded as the original. It's not, but it's funky because it's it's got a really great cast and it's almost verbatim. Um, but they do add a few things and, and modernize it a little bit. But uh, yeah, actually, I just got it here recently on the Kino Lorber release, and they got both the '97 and the Henry Fonda version on the same discs. Oh, so cool. yeah, yeah, I I thought it was interesting to 
to kind of contrast the two. And I like both of them, but I still have to go with the original. But uh, the cast of the the remake is uh, actually really well casted. So. I mean, I, I referenced 12 Angry Men in the, the video I did for um, Fall, where it's like you can take a really simple, really self-contained premise of like mm -hmm. get some people together in a very constrained location and like play off the tension of them having to do something together. So, you know, 12 Angry Men, okay, like they're just literally in a room. They've got to make a decision together. And so it's like the the, uh, the back and forth of like a group dynamics when they have to like one person trying to persuade the others and like which way they're going to go. Um, lifeboat by the Alfred Hitchcock movie where again you've got a bunch of people just trapped together on a lifeboat in the middle of the ocean um, mm -hmm. and all the, the ordeals that they have to go through the decisions that they have to make about who like how they distribute their resources and stuff uh, and you know fall where it's like two people again stuck in a very constrained geographical location struggling to survive I think all these premises are are great because they're so simple but like if you yeah. execute them well there's so much you can do with them there's so much mileage you can get out of something so simple and i think that's a really cool aspect of storytelling about yeah. like a bounty hunter who's trapped in a three season tv show with a dribbling baby <laughs> <laughs> i mean if they were stuck in one room or something and they got his game right? okay. <laughs> and some man's that. life was on the line maybe yeah and but one of them was racist does it does it incorporate plot elements that constantly rewrite themselves and just erase what happened before? By any chance? Exactly what the fans would want until they realize they don't want this at all. Yeah, and they have, so that's good. Yeah. Um, anyway, the the other the only other thing I wanted to talk about tonight was the Flash, which is coming yeah. out soon, and the critics have delivered their views on it, and we all respect professional movie critics here, don't we? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They are well known for being trustworthy sources of hard hitting um, Can information. Can you define professional movie critic? Movie anyone, who's, uh, yeah, anyone who gets paid to do it. Campion. Yeah. Well, we've got some of their technically views. Technically, we all are, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, yeah, but we. we I don't, don't even respect in, myself. We don't. So. We don't get employed by people as such. Like people That's just happen true. to watch us. You know. Yeah. Uh, these people belong to actual companies, so you know that they're legit. Um, but anyway, I can read from you. I can read you guys a selection of reviews for the Flash. They're all very sure. short, so they're all just like the the top comments. I'm um, willing. To anyway, they're all telling us that the movie has a lot of heart and emotions. Well, well, judge for yourselves. So this is from the direct, and this is their selection of quotes. So Fandango's Eric Davis said, uh, "DC's The Flash is tremendous," and it's Ooh. all caps, so you know he's he's not fucking around. <laughs> Forget DC; it is without a doubt among the best superhero films ever made. An all timer, inventive storytelling, fantastic. All caps. Inventive stories. <laughs> Action sequences. Great cast. So many nerdy details. I'm in tears at the Yay. end. Everything oh, you want from a superhero oh. film and more. Did Kevin Smith write this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> is that Kevin say, Smith? Yeah. Did you yeah. see Kevin Smith's tweet the other day? Uh, it's just like, I don't know if you're aware, guys, but a little a little while ago, I kind of went through some major mental issues. Like, no fucking shit. You really? Know. <laughs> I didn't see his tweet because because the bitch has me blocked. But um <laughs> What I do did see was his people interview, and he tried to compare being made fun of in as a kid by a teacher for being fat to somebody who has post traumatic stress disorder that oh, had no. been on tour in like Afghanistan and shit. Oh, I'm like, are no. you uh, kidding me, God. dude? This is you this are, is like movie Bob Cohen, like the Super Mario games, like his Vietnam. Yeah, I went <laughs> off on it. I'm like, you you got to be insane, man. Give me a break. Yeah, fucking. Modern problems. Uh, yeah. Okay, the other couple we got here was uh, comicbook.com's Brandon Davis. Damn, the Flash is good. It's super inventive, both visually and in concept. The dynamic of two Barry Allens is crazy well done. Emotions hit me intensely ah, hard. Emotions. Solid, solid surprises, and it got me wanting to watch again and really eager to see how they follow it. Well done. Uh, well, well done. Well, well Collider, done. wait, wait, here's a good one. Collider Stephen Weintraub said, uh, The Flash is fantastic. I know Ezra Miller has made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but they are so and I'm I'm this is how he wrote it, so good in this movie. <laughs> Loved Keaton, the action, humor, and emotion. Andy huh? Machete has crafted something special. Thumbs way up their arse. Warner yeah. Brothers didn't show the after credit scene. Don't know why he mentioned that, but okay, whatever. Well, <laughs> well, is going to be one anymore. Is there a yeah, negative sorry. review in there? Uh, let's see. Curious. <laughs> uh, no. The Flash is massively entertaining. It made sense to me why the DC didn't shelve this one. Michael Keaton is chef's kiss. Uh, <laughs> God. Let's see. Variety said The Flash is not one of the greatest superhero movies ever. Oh wait, here we go. There's a there's a negative review here. This so Variety. The ranks. This is from Variety as well. So wow. The Flash is not one of the greatest superhero movies ever. Parts are funny and fun, but I was completely exhausted by the second hour. It took me at least five minutes to recognize Michael Keaton, though. So do what that. So do with that what you will. Hmm. Um, okay. Hey, right. I mean, in the trailer, it's very recognizable. <laughs> There's also one here who saying... Michael Keaton was. <laughs> that's, that's a bit bizarre. Um, also, Cat, Cat... How do you even fucking say your stupid name? Cat K. Steven said, <laughs> uh, The Flash is an ambitious movie with very little to actually say. Packed with cliches and far longer than it needs to be. It shares themes with some similar titles, but it doesn't execute nearly as well. A far cry from the best superhero movie of all time. Is okay. Uh, well, yeah. Know okay. Their so interesting. Um, yeah, bit of a mix here. So mm. yeah, they, they've kind of selected like a, a cherry pick selection of super positive shill reviews. Sorry, totally legit, uh, fair <laughs> reviews, uh, and negative ones, which I might be inclined to believe a bit more. But uh, yeah. Um, well, they had uh, a thing called CinemaCon uh, a couple of days ago where studio people and shills and hacks, but also legitimate people go and they get shown the films. And the feedback that came out of there seemed largely to be surprisingly positive. Well, that's what even he's given, reading here, I believe. Yeah. Even yeah. given all the flakiness, it seemed to be that was the tone. And uh, James I, Gunn, he came out and he was extremely positive towards about it. So there's two narratives. And uh, there was one review on Collider, I think, has said, um, the first hour is fantastic, really loved it. The second hour, it's the same DC villain problems and the same uh, length and exhaustion problems. And that's, I think that's probably where it's going to come out. Well, I mean, to be it, fair, I wouldn't have expected James Gunn to come out and say, this movie fucking sucks, man. Don't bother <laughs> yeah, seeing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, don't go like see this. That means nothing coming from it. He has to say that. Like he's, yeah. It's funny as well to see... They they decided early on it's like we're gonna be packing everything for marketing into into the flash. Fuck Shazam, it's out. No one cares about it. Did James Gunn even say anything about Shazam? <laughs> no. Oh yeah, that was good. Uh, I, I'm sure yeah, it was just a passing like it's fantastic. Anyway, well, which is funny because <laughs> his wife was in it too. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think that uh, the last hour being a problem is one of the things we should pay attention to because I wonder how long it's gonna take for people to go, hey, wait a minute. We just got Man of Steel, only this time with a chick instead of Henry Cavill. Because that's what this movie is. It really yeah. is. It, it, it's at the end it's of the a, day. It's a and they're distracting from Michael Flashpoint. Keaton. This is a bastardization of Flashpoint. They've got Michael Keaton taking the role of Bruce Wayne when it should be Thomas Wayne, exactly. his father. And they have a uh, androgynous fucking woman playing... Uh, Supergirl, who should be playing Superman. Superman. Uh, think, um, and Superman shouldn't even really be featured too much in Flashpoint anyway. The whole thing about Flashpoint was Aquaman and uh, Wonder Woman going to war with uh, Themyscira versus Atlantis because uh, they were lovers and then they weren't lovers and then Wonder Woman cut the head off Mira and... <laughs> the Aquaman got a little bit pissed off with that, and then the war started raging through, and it was uh, and Reverse Flash was the um, was the big instigator of uh, uh, well, Barry was the one who who changed who saved his mum to change the future, and then Reverse Flash was causing all kinds of of nonsense. So you had the the uh, the weird thing is, I mean, it's great to see Michael Keaton. However, Michael Keaton should be in a a Batman Beyond film. That's what he should be in. 
And this film should have had Jeffrey Dean Morgan yep. reprising his role as Thomas Wayne, uh, but being Batman, and he would have been perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect for Thomas Wayne in this. Uh, and then you could have still had Ezra Miller as The Flash, and you could have even had Jason Samosa and uh, and, <laughs> and uh, Gal Gadot, uh, you know, singing Imagine together. It could have worked. This this really could have worked as a, as a much, much uh, better film, but they're just retreading. I mean, I don't even know what I saw in a trailer. Honestly, I don't know what I saw. No. I just saw Michael Keaton and clapped. Yeah, yeah. Because I saw Michael Keaton. That's what Keaton. they want you to do, As. That's exactly what they want you to do. But it's just but retreading, retreading old stuff with, with Zod and, and shit. Yeah. yeah. To your point, you've got two co-leads who are perfectly androgynous, almost gender interchangeable. Uh, I've never seen that before. It's extraordinary. Uh, Three if you got... count Ezra twice. Yeah, yeah exactly. True. Yeah. And you've got Michael Keaton who comes out and says, uh, let's get nuts. Like, that was just oh. a, a zany, exasperated line. And they're delivering it like it's full of portent and significance. You know, I, I don't want, like, it's like having Gary Coleman in moody lighting saying, what are you talking about with this? Like, it's not the tone for it, you know? It, it, uh, yeah, it would be. Yeah. It would be like bringing back Tony Montana for another movie and just having him go, say hello to my little friend. Yeah, and, we know that. You know, it's just like really, sounding really bored. It's like you, you've yeah. missed the, the tone and the cadence and the meaning of that, that delivery the first time around. It's like you yeah. can't just say a thing that people remember with no context yeah. to it and yeah. expect people better to care. Better comparison, actually, Drinker, I think a better comparison would be Star Trek Into Darkness with Khan. Like, oh. What yeah. what does it mean to them? It means nothing to them. It means something to yeah. him. It yeah. means something to us as the audience. It's just, it just reminds me of con the whole con business in in, yep. in, in darkness. It's pointless. It, yeah, when he says that, I am I am con Nunian Singh, yeah, it's like who and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's it's just stupid. And and we're being distracted by all this Batman business. And at the end of the day, as is right, I'm not even that big of a fan of the Flashpoint story because I, I, the logic of it is kind of redonkulous. But the coolest part of the story is the Thomas Wayne mm. and Martha Wayne twist. That yeah. is the best part. And you're taking that away. And, and you're right, as you guess what our Batman Begins was Batgirl. Thankfully, Zaslav killed that because he could. Is that that was what Bat, that was de our de facto Batman Beyond we were getting. I just feel yeah. that having the, in this universe, and then having the 1989 Tim Burton aesthetic into it feels gross, just aesthetically as a mashing of two things together. Feels bizarre well, it, and I, gross I, to watch. Zack Snyder, I, Tim Burton, very different. Yeah, uh, I think with yeah. this movie as well, I didn't even, there wasn't even a hint of the Tim Burton styling of it. Like what you it got was... Plasticky. Yeah, like yeah. what you got was the a lot of those uh, you know combat scenes with the, the well, you got a seventy year old like, Batman doing things he couldn't do in the eighties. Exactly, yeah, and he's like he's very obviously like CGI'd in, and it just feels like a Marvel movie with with some of the like classic characters like Batman eighty nine transposed into it, but it's still got the Marvel aesthetic. Very well, CGI I don't heavy. Help, um feel a little bit cynical about it because that, that, the first time i saw it was actually on real bbc as well so you can go and watch that did you get hit with copyright for that as or how did yeah. that go yeah, yeah i forget well in any case uh, it was like you know here comes the flash and it's like I open some image, dark yeah. and shadows bat symbols and the bat cave and then he's explaining his whole origin, origin story and you're like sorry what the fuck is going on like what? and it's just like well it, it becomes very clear what what um what the goal is and i imagine seeing this film like how much how much screen time do you think Keaton's gonna get because it's a bit um, of a tightrope, right? The less I, I, of it it is, the more of a false advertisement it feels like it is. But then the more of it it is, the more embarrassing the film is. Well, I, I think he's trailer. probably gonna get. I think he's gonna get quite a bit. I know I he's, he's in this be... more than he was supposed to be in Batgirl. That I. Um, yeah, I, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he's it. fairly fairly integral um, to the to the plot. What we got here? I think I just figured ben, that's oh. images. I mean, they, they got a little hair piece for him, right? Yeah, that's not his hair. But yeah, he looks a bit bored. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know how to describe it. It's like even the bat symbol on his chest looks weird. Like, I'm no, that's, sure the, that... that's the Batman Returns bat symbol. Yeah, and he's got a whole right. new bat suit because the Batman Returns bat suit 
is being worn by the flash is being worn by the flash as we heard a while back yeah they they cut off the ears <laughs> yeah i got a picture of that here too if you want to yeah, see that but, yeah. and they spray a, a lightning bolt across over the um bat symbol and he's spray painted it red and it looks horrendous <laughs> yeah it looks stupid but Chucking in yeah, a sickly and morose looking. They do have a blue and gray bat costume in the in the uh, armory. Really, yeah. Uh -huh. Chucking in a sickly and morose looking Ben Affleck. I don't know why. Totally they look like they fell well, He's just well, he's just not to, like the super bark, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, he he said he's, he's only like, in five minutes. We know his. Yeah. Whole this, this is the Ben Affleck. It's like we've got all different versions of him. Like we've had the like the super buff like uh, you know action Affleck who was in Batman versus Superman. Then we've had the the bloated alcoholic <laughs> middle aged guy yeah. who was in Justice League, and then and then we've got the the sort of post recovery guy who's just like yeah. really <laughs> strung out and like well, tired. There's the it's third like a, the twelve step in program in films. There's, there's exactly, yeah. It's like you you can tell he's lost a ton of weight and in, in, from the trailers, and it's just like yeah, he doesn't look like he did in in any of his previous movies. So again, he just looks weird. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, there's a question here. Actually, I have to address this one as well. Uh, we drinker needs a way for us to send a super chat that instantly gives the doggo a treat. So I'll, you, I'll, I'll make this deal to you. Like for every, every time you send a super chat that's addressed to the critical doggo, I will pat him on the head. There you go. So <laughs> you'll be able to see that happen. <laughs> regret coming into that. Yeah, he'd be like, yeah, oh, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> I will do it as many times as I can anyway. But yeah, until I get bitten. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think As was about to say there is a, another Batman in the movie yeah. from the leaks we've heard, and it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever because it's technically the Batman that's already in the movie, so I don't understand that one. Then there was the other cameo that people are talking about that I'm like, yeah, that's cool for nerds, but if you're not a nerd, nobody else is going to get it. They're just going to be asking, why is he in the movie? You know, like it's a bit of because well, you say that, but there's a bit of that weird, like big bang theory type it. nerd stuff where people will see a thing that they're supposed to recognize as nerd stuff, and then they go, "Ah, look, nerd stuff!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at that. And you're like, "Do you even know what that is?" And they're like, "No." Yeah, exactly. Like, no. That's that's it. They're pushing. Yeah, this is to normies. To normies, the normies then go and watch a YouTube video, and then the YouTube video says, "This is what this is," and then the normie turns around and goes, "I know what this is. This is this nerd." You, you moron, you idiot! How did you not know that? That they just found out the night before. Yeah. Or we're one of their friends, and they ask us. <laughs> I've had that happen. Point. Oh, about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, well said. Like, and that's the thing. And, and you're right, because like the general audience, they're like. They'll they'll eat this up because my buddy after the Super Bowl ad, he was acting like it had to be the first time I ever knew that Michael Keaton was in the movie, and he sent a message about it. And I'm like, yeah, I know. They've been shooting this movie since my since my kid was in high school, and that's not even a joke. <laughs> well, it has been that long. They've been shooting this movie. It's like three four years. It's now. Been, yeah, 2019. They started filming. This? 2018 or 19. Yeah. Well, Tom, if you had to make a prediction on the the box office tally for this one. I think your, it's going to open big. Be? I think it's going to open big, and whether or not it has legs or not is how fast people realize, wait a minute, we just got fed the same movie we got back then only with a chick, and they killed Henry Cavill. What the fuck? You know, until people start realizing that, then maybe some people will fall off, but Michael Keaton, he's got some power, man, and I'll tell you, even me, knowing all this crap going into this, I was in the store the other day, and I saw the Flash toys, and I started going through them just to look at them to be you know, nosy. And I saw the Michael Keaton Batman staring back at me. And for a quick moment, I thought about buying it because it was Michael Keaton as Batman. Hmm. And I'm like, that's just it right there. That thing, that tinge. That's what people have when they see this trailer. They're going to go, oh, Michael Keaton Batman. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. And I mean, it's going to be that way. It's going to open big. I just, I don't know how it's going to end up uh, at the end of the day. But because Ezra Miller, most people don't give a shit. They don't know who Ezra Miller is. We do. We know who he is and his shenanigans, but all the people that have been straggled is, you know, yeah, those people yeah. know who he is. And, and <laughs> but, I mean, even even yeah. putting aside all the the unsavory stuff in real life, like most people look at Ezra Miller from Justice League and they think he's annoying as fuck. Like, I don't want to spend an entire movie with this guy. I can barely spend five minutes with him in the average scene. 
And so I just wonder, like, what's the marketing to this? It, it's all just got to be around Keaton. So far, you know? and but pretty much. And th well, the, the fact as well that there's two Ezra Millers in this, like, what's more insufferable than one Ezra Miller? Well, yeah, it's two. <laughs> you know, and like, you've got to spend the bulk of the movie with the two of them just gurning away at each other and, and overacting every scene that they're in. Like, I don't, I don't want to endure that for two hours. Do you? No. So I guess the big question is, is the Keaton factor enough for a large audience to cope or at least, you know, tolerate all the androgynous Ezra Miller nonsense as well? Will it get over that threshold? I think it's I ain't going gonna, gonna, gonna to lie. Hot Toys, the moment they put out the, 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 uh, both. Michael Keaton and the Ben Affleck Batman, I'm fucking grabbing them immediately. See? They're getting on pre-order. <laughs> there's, there's, there's not even a moment of hesitation. If they do the ben, ben Affleck one, I'm getting it. They're definitely going to do the Michael Keaton one. I'm getting it. Am I going to get the Flash? No. Am I going to get the Supergirl? No. But I'm going to get the I'm going to get the two boys because I love my I love Ben Affleck's Batman. I love uh, Michael Keaton's Batman. And and I think Michael Keaton does have that Michael Keaton Batman. As we just discussed earlier, that that there was there was a pop culture phenomenon around that era, mm -hmm. and I think I think that's that's still still in a lot of people's uh, memories. And He's so, like I, comic I, book I, royalty, yeah. Yeah, I think he, I think Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton is the drill. Michael Keaton is the film. Period. Yeah. Well, we know it's, that Gen Z has a, a disconnect with superhero films. It's a very small proportion is Gen Z who's going to see Marvel and DC films. So this has a very Gen Z feel to it. Um, and so maybe it's going to be interesting to see if, if there is a connection there, a generational but it, sort of, um, it's, it's a funny one because Gen Z would have grown up with Marvel movies. You know, that would have been like the, the, the biggest things at the box office all throughout their childhoods. And so you think they would have a massive connection to that stuff at yeah. this point. Like, in the same way that the, the kids who grew up with the, the original Star Wars trilogy bonded with that. That was their cultural mm. touchstone. You'd kind of think, uh, well, yeah, the kids who grew up with Marvel, that would that would be what their benchmark is for pop culture. Unless it's it's kind of shit culture, in which case they, <laughs> they reject it. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's going to have a big, huge opening, and I think it's going to tail off extremely quickly in a kind of Ant-Man kind of dynamic. Does anyone here think it'll be good? No. I, I think the best, <laughs> I think, judging by the trailer, I wasn't massively put off by the trailer per se. It was just noise and, and Michael Keaton. That's all I was caring about. I, I, I didn't... I, I, I think the best it can be is a popcorn movie. I think that's the best it can be. Yeah. But it could also be horrendous. <laughs> I, I think um, if I was to try and make some kind of prediction now, I would say it's probably... It's going to be in the middle for normies. I think it's going to be in the same sort of realm as Black Adam. Uh, just with slightly Ooh. more recognizable characters, I think it's not going to offend too many sensibilities, but oh. it's it's not going to it's not going to get too many people fired up either. I so I, I think it's, you're not missing anything. I know. You know, it's just that was a that was a nice, inoffensive, safe superhero movie. Just uh, like Henry Shazam Cavill 2. was in it, you know. He Five was. Seconds. Yeah. Pierce Brosnan was in it. We know that, Mauler. Oh, that, <laughs> we all loved him in it. Mola, that's all I did is when the movie came out, I just went onto YouTube and went post credit scene and then I watched it and that's all I needed to watch for the film. That's all I wanted. You know how like different eras are defined, you know, like Stone Age, Bronze Age, Information Age, I think is one of them. It's like, do you think the one we're in would be the it's wasting Henry age. Cavill age? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the woke yeah. age. It's this fascinating is, this is the time. Age. We're going to look back on this as the dark age. Dark <laughs> age. Sure. This is our this is our cultural regression age. Oh, you're not wrong. They're like reading history books. They're like, why would they waste such a great actor? Kids about the source. <laughs> like, you know, it's just one of those mysteries, Timmy. We never know. We, we yeah, they're going to look out. back on their guard like stupidly. Like, why he was he was difficult to work with? Why was he difficult to work with? Because he he cared too much about the source material. 
Ah. But Daddy, he would have made a great James Bond. What, what happened? Well, you uh, see, they, they got Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. If that if he actually gets cast as Bond, we all riot. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah. actually yeah. odd because I made that joke last week too. <laughs> that it beat Timothy Chalamet. He's going to be Superman as well. He well, say, um, it's a Ted Two joke. Have you guys? Any of you seen this? The movie? Yeah. Ted Two, uh, yeah, when, a long time ago. When they're yeah, announcing, pretty good. Quite announcing like the casting of Superman, and then they say, Jonah Hill, and then Mark Wahlberg goes, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah. if Keaton, this is what Keaton, this is the outfit Keaton should have been wearing in this film. I agree. If it you're going to do been, it, do something different, exactly. Yeah, you yeah. had to do the kingdom, you had to kind of like do the kingdom come broken Batman, old broken Batman, in his suit of armor, basically. That's what you needed to do with it. Yeah, this, seems like a, this seems like a slicker version of the Batman Returns suit to me. I'm not a yeah. huge fan. Yeah. Of it. But I mean, I was kind of fine with seeing him in, in outfits that were appropriate for his comic book era, I suppose, or his movie era. Um, just, but everything has to be darker in order to be cool, though. Like if I'm on a, in a, a Star Trek bridge... I can, it must be look like a like a club late at night where you can barely see anything. <laughs> I well, mean, yeah, there's that. But then, like, it was always the aesthetic of his movies anyway. So, like, you couldn't, you couldn't. It's not like it, we've gone darker than what he always was anyway. So, yeah, I guess it makes sense. By the way, so, yeah, kind of, did you like the yeah, way in the trailer that they stole um, the Avengers homework? Hmm. What? The dropship comes in, drops the bike. The bike goes off. That's how. That's how. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That is. And Win Winter Age of Ultron, is it Winter yeah. Soldier? Age, Age of Ultron. Ultron. Yeah, Age of Ultron. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. That's how Black Widow comes in. Dropship comes out on the bike. Well, we're getting to the point with these movies now, where like all of these cool action sequences have probably been done in previous yeah. films already, and so yeah, we're just we're just replicating stuff. Like Complete I think you shared a tweet. Where it was like comparing the the Blue Beetle trailer, no, yeah, the Blue Beetle trailer with, with um, you know, other there was a bunch of different movies, ones like there. Shazam, yeah. yeah, and it's just like yeah, they, you've literally copied beat for beat some of the the action sequences. The there was even like the, the scene stuff. with the bus wasn't that one that they just did in Doctor Strange as well or whatever. Yep. Like cutting the bus in half, like both yep. of them did. Yeah. When he's when he's falling out the sky and he stops like just a few inches off the ground, like you know, hovering like that because he's finally yep. learned how to fly and all that. And it's just yeah, it's just all stuff that's been done before. It's just like yeah. Well, I'm sure you can do a super cycle. cut of a lot of things because you know it used to be the shit shooting in the sky, right, or a fart cloud, like that used yeah. to be the thing for a oh, while. Oh so yeah, like, the yeah, sky portal. Yeah. I miss my big well, blue lasers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Take yeah, us back laser. to simpler times. Later I guess the one thing is is that uh, we're coming to the end of this kind of shitty stuck in the Maya phase. We had Ant Man kind of stuck between phases, and they just had to get it out so they could move on to the next continuity. And then having um, uh, like The Witcher, no one particularly wanted to be there, but they had to get and finish this third season just so they could get out of the mire and move on. And uh, and this thing with the Flash as well, like it's been sitting around for years, gone through four set potential directors was problematic and they're finally just shoveling it out so we're getting out of that phase i guess yeah i mean it's it's a transition period obviously for dc because they've got these movies that were in the pipeline they were too much invested in them to cancel them uh when zaslov took over and then he brought in james gunn so they had to be just shoveled out there somehow and just hope for the best um and then they get to reset everything and move on to the next phase but man i just question how much money they're actually going to have available to do this stuff to launch james gunn's new version of the dc universe because it's coming at a time when the, the superhero genre is in decline anyway warner is not exactly swimming in cash and they're probably going to lose money on the flash and they're probably going to lose it on aquaman too mm -hmm. and so you just wonder like how much is going to be left to actually try and launch this new dcu it's okay though, because uh, after Superman Legacy, where he fucks up Superman's legacy, we're going to get the authority, who nobody knows what the fuck that is. I'm excited for Creature Commandos, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, will, I will say, he seems to be aware, at least vaguely, of what people are looking for with, with Superman. It could actually turn out there's a potential universe where you like Superman Legacy as. What are you going to do then? Maybe. Well, if I like it, good. 
Because there's a film well, just, I like. The, the thing about it is, like, if we home. like it, it's just going to be like, well, I'm still kind of annoyed at him for doing this whole creature command. <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> Dago. <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the dog was taking all the attention. He's the Michael Keaton yeah. of the show. Yeah. And even if even if Superman's good, you're following it up with the authority. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. I'm, I'm sure. Is don't it, worry. I'm sure there's did. like. I'm sure there's at least a dozen projects that his wife's going to be in that will mis- miraculously get made no matter Ooh. what. <laughs> yeah. uh, have you guys seen any of the clips that have been releasing for Guardians? No, not interested. Yeah, uh, I haven't hated them. I'm going next week. I, I hope it's good. I just, yeah. I, well, I'm happy to say I'm interested. It's the last MCU movie. That's what it pretty is. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the only one left. Um, the, the, the car clip I thought was pretty funny. And then the, I don't know if anyone's seen the rocket clip where he's, yeah. Uh, in prison or whatever with his other creatures and uh i was like shit man i like that clip more than too. pretty much everything in phase four and five so um th- and then i saw comments about it it's like it doesn't really matter well it, it does matter in the sense that like if it's any good if it's a movie that you actually enjoy all it is really at this point is an advertisement for james gunn's dc it's got nothing to do with the mcu at this point is it yeah it's like this is what i can accomplish thing. like follow me over to my new platform <laughs> So um and yeah, like the, the movie's gonna be focusing on Rocket by the looks of things, and Rocket's pretty like likable. Um it has a shot. It has a shot of being a movie I could even recommend, you know? How crazy would that be? I mean it'd be nice to just get one good Marvel movie before <laughs> the whole thing completely implodes. So maybe this is it. You know? Maybe all these guys the... who all these guys who always used to have this cool social cachet, like Filoni and Favreau and Feige and Gunn. Well, that's kind of dissipated and gone now. Like they don't have that cool cachet they used to have. Well, they either they could die heroes or they could live long enough to see themselves become the villains and yep. uh, see what's happened. I suppose. You mean like the Nolan trilogy? Yeah. But Rises was bad. That's the joke. <laughs> it was. Rises is horrible. We we kind of all agree. I try, I made a video on it, and I still get pushed back on that to this day. <laughs> really? I, I How can I, anybody I, defend I, it? There's a lot of Nolan right. fans out there. I think it's all right. I think rises. It's better okay. than the Batman, I guess. But... No, yeah. <laughs> it's it's okay, as we're all allowed to be wrong once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I just think I think the well, no. there's issues. There's no denying these issues, but don't get us back com- on comparative right to what we got right now. I've seen I've seen the Dark Knight Rises many, many times. I've seen the Batman twice, and I'm in no rush to see it again, really. Yeah. Which for mm. me is weird because I I love to binge my Batman films, but uh, it's yeah, just... it's like it's decent two hour, good two hour movie that unfortunately goes on for nearly three hours. That's the problem. It's it's definitely long. It's definitely on the long side. It's Antifa, oh. man, anyway. It's not Batman. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah, there's a question here as well. Why is Gunn's reputation gone? I don't think we're saying that Gunn's reputation is gone necessarily. It's just a lot of these other guys. Um, you know, John Favreau, <laughs> Dave Filoni, like, you know, <laughs> Kevin Smith, even if you want to go yeah. back <laughs> far enough. Like, a lot of these guys had good reputations back in the day, but it's like eventually they. they went too far they've been around too long they've they've released too many stinkers i guess and um you know hopefully it's not going to happen to james gunn but uh you know guardians 3 might be great but then he's suddenly put in charge of a very troubled franchise and you kind of wonder how much he can really accomplish in the time that he's going to have we will be watching his career with great interest Mm. yes (laughs) nice nice uh, pull there no, his career is more like, or his reputation, I should say, is more like Schrodinger's cat right now. Like, we'll have to wait and see how Superman pans out. Yeah. It's, it's not like, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's not like James Gunn has done a lot of movies. Like, his filmography is fairly short, but it's like he's... Mm. Well, part of the problem people, is people, it's very specific. Is is It doesn't suit Superman at all. Yeah, he's great at doing, like, a team of misfits put together that have to do a crazy job, you know? Uh, so great you know you can do the suicide squad you can do the guardians movies that's well suited to what you're what you're into but superman is a different kettle of fish what i will say 
it's just not important. You know, we we had a time where it was like, who's who's making Lord of the Rings? Like that guy who made those like exactly horror movies. Yeah, like what? <laughs> yeah. And that's so, why yeah. I exhaled like that because I've seen Super. I've seen almost every one of his films. It's like I hate to say he's not incapable of pulling together a I, decent I, I superhero hope. film. I got some yeah. hope in there. I mean, I'm not going to hey. be surprised if he nerfs it, but. To keep on theme of what we've been discussing, the backlash to Keaton's casting as Batman was insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can understand that at the time. I remember a certain Joker casting. Yeah. Got a lot of pushback. Yeah, he's Ledger. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant Jared Leto. Yeah, it's like, well, look, <laughs> look, look how well that one worked out. <laughs> No, I think we're all going to turn out shit, you know, fucking hell. Thing is, though, uh, okay, he didn't have a great run as uh, as the Joker, but, you know, he, he really pulled it back with Morbius. Oh, well, and Affleck got a lot of pushback <laughs> to it first, too. And, and even in the worst of reviews of Batman v Superman, Affleck still usually got good praise, even though a, I know a lot of people that were just like, no way can I see Ben Affleck as Batman. And now it's, some yeah. people, it's their favorite Batman, so. Just I liked him. I, I defended him, him from the start. Because uh, yeah. who thought knew... Arnie couldn't pull off Mr. Freeze, and they were wrong. <laughs> yeah, he showed them. Did he you know who them. was cast as Mr. Freeze before Arnie? Who? Who they got Stallone? rid of? Stallone. No. Oh. When you when you hear it, you're gonna be like, "Fuck!" Patrick Stewart was cast as Mr. Oh, Freeze. Oh my god! That would have been good. Whoa! That would have been interesting. That would have been pretty interesting. Thanks for I, ruining my day, as Jesus. <laughs> yeah, is Patrick it, Stewart <laughs> saying those lines as Arnie. Like, yeah. yeah. Be... <laughs> Chill. Is it is it Chill. true the reason is it true the reason Val Kilmer is not in that movie is because he he refused to work with uh, with Schwarzenegger. That's the rumor. Because, the rumor was is. His... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, because Schwarzenegger vetoed him being the T one thousand in yep. Terminator two, and he yep. just fucking held the grudge ever since then. I'm sorry, but no one's beating Robert Patrick. That's uh, he he owned that forever. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not even Iceman from Top Gun. I mean, well, come on, more. In my understanding nope, 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 of nope, nope, nope. of Arnie's side of that is that uh, they wanted an unknown technically to play the T one thousand. That was kind of the whole point because. You know, kind of going back to the original Terminator, they actually had originally wanted Lance Hendrickson to play it, but the studio wanted a name. Right. But Cameron's like, all the names they kept throwing at me were stupid, like O.J. Simpson and shit like that. <laughs> Nobody would Until, believe him. It could be a, a cold-blooded killer. Exactly. Who'd believe O.J. Simpson would be a cold-blooded killer, right? Oh, and then they, no. and when they said Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's like, you're insane, right? And then like maybe for Kyle. So he went to meet him under the guise that he was going to try and talk him into playing Kyle because his whole thing was the Terminator was supposed to be an unassuming person. You didn't know who he was. And that's he basically stole the idea initially from the original film and used that idea of him being the cop. And you trust him in the second film because he doesn't seem like Arnold. Yeah. You know, he's he seems like a, a nice guy and all that kind of stuff looks normal. He doesn't look like he's lethal, but, you know, he's just uh he was well cast, and I can see why Schwarzenegger would be like, no, because Val Kilmer at that time was pretty well known. He had just come off The Doors, Willow, a bunch of other things. Like, people knew who he was. He had been in Top Gun, obviously, so. Yeah. But then, like, yeah, obviously oh, when and... Schwarzenegger was cast as... Oh, sorry, on you go. No, 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 no. He, he went off and uh, he went off and immediately signed up as Simon Templar, the saint. I thought he went oh. off to do Island of Dr. Moreau. <laughs> Ooh. One of those, wasn't it? I'm pr I'm pretty sure. Wasn't that right? instead After... of the fourth Batman movie, though? Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, th yeah. That because was instead like... of the fourth Batman movie, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because um, he was going to be back, obviously, to play Batman again. He found out that Schwarzenegger. Yeah, was I think it be, was uh, Mr. Freeze and Doctor he... Moreau. Yeah, yeah, because he he pretty much said to the producers, right, either he goes or I do, because I'm not working with that son of a bitch. And so they're like, well, Schwarzenegger's <laughs> a bigger name, yes. so bye bye, Val. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, yeah. fuck you. I'm gonna I'm gonna star alongside um, Marvin. Marlon Brando, Marlon Brando in, in well, this yeah. amazing new movie and he went yeah. off to do Island of Dr. Moreau and then the casting for Batman and Robin they were just like we got this r fucking amazing guy that people love in ER he's called George Clooney They he's the perfect Batman oh boy oh, oh. really oh, he wasn't man. it was just the writing because I mean George Clooney should have been able to play Batman but uh, should have I I've, no. should have been able to play uh, George... it all over the place George yeah. George Clooney does not have the 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 menace to play Batman, and he doesn't have the True. kind of suaveness to be Bruce Wayne. I don't even mm. know. I don't suave. really know why George Clooney 
became such a big star. Like, I don't really know what he had. Like, he was he was fine in ER, but, like, everything else I saw him in... Soccer moms just... found him sexy and dreamy. Maybe he's he was charming. the original McDreamy. He was just always George Clooney in everything he was in. Like, he never he played was... a character. He was just himself in everything. He was Roseanne's boss in Roseanne. For a couple of years. Like, yeah. Man, that's a deep cut. I know. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember what the fuck I did this morning, but I remember George Clooney <laughs> yeah. and, and you got your priorities. And, and the second Killer Tomatoes movie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing that? Yes. I can't remember, I can't remember that. <laughs> Wasn't he in Facts of Life too or something like that? Oh, he, was. Was. Only the best. he was he was daytime he was daytime TV man. Or you yeah. know, he was kind yeah, of like that. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. Well, there is that. Well, Memories I love cool. how the, uh, everything comes back to Batman chat. It's great. Yeah. I love it. Because yep. <laughs> uh, it's Batmania. It yeah. is. Uh, should we do a few more a few more super chats? See what sure. we can get yeah. out of this. All right. RRTNZ says, Hail Drinker. Suggestion for a VIP lounge. Scott Adkins. Yes. British martial arts uh, actor and stuntman. Worked with all the greats on both big and small films. Yeah, th that's a guy who's like... He's really great at doing action movies. Obviously, he can do his stunts and stuff like that. Just never quite hit the A list yet. He never quite got that that killer role to break out, and it's a shame. Um, and he was even in uh, John Wick Four. He was the fat German guy. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, Killer good stuff. Uh, Mister Nobody says, "Don't know if you played the Horizon games." Yes, I've rec I've uh, reviewed one of them. But according to the latest DLC, Aloy's gay. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That actually is fine because it makes sense in in universe because the the woman that she's cloned from Elizabeth Sobek is also revealed to be gay in the second game. So I guess if she's an exact duplicate of her, she would probably be gay too. I guess that's <laughs> like genetic or something. So <laughs> makes sense, I guess. Um... <laughs> Drinker wondering if being gay is a choice. He's like, uh... well, I'm mean, like, you know, is is it is it physical? Like, so if you clone someone, would that make them gay as well, or is it like something that happens at, at stages in your life or something? I don't know, but uh, I'm assuming it's it's genetic. So, like, yeah, it should be in the clone as well, I guess. Um, Whalen Pacific says TRA, the the ultimate question. I did a poll on this once on Twitter, and it was surprisingly close. I go I go on the side of T. Agreed. Don't know about you guys. Uh, T, unless it's an incredible A. Yeah. Mm. That That's where I'd fall as well. <clears throat> yeah. Tom? Tom! <laughs> that was a question. I'm so sorry. What was up? Uh, T or A, <laughs> if you had to choose. T or A? No, T, T or A. A. Tits or ass? Oh. Ass. <laughs> the nerdiest okay. someone is, the more you have to be explicit. If you said yeah. TRA, I would have got it. TRA, I was like, what the hell does TRA stand for? <laughs> All right. The Smokey. TSA, are they too intrusive? The TSA. Smokey, yeah. is it is it TRA for you? Yeah, I'm not getting anything out of him. Yeah. He's keeping his cars close to his chest. <laughs> uh. All right. Blue Collar Loser says, love the fall video that you made today. I saw it in theaters. Oh, I wish I had. Uh, I'm sure it's probably good at home, but some films need to be seen on the big screen. Yeah, those those big, like in-depth, like um, shots of people hanging off stuff. Like you get the real sense of volume, I suppose, with uh, with a cinema screen. So yeah, I kind of wish I'd seen it that way. Unfortunately, um, Simon Mills says, "Can you wish my other half a happy birthday?" Yes, I can. You didn't say their name though, <laughs> so happy birthday. birthday. Other half. Yeah. Also, keep up the great work, all of you. We need uh, with Noah and I extra shots, my friends. Yeah, oh, I should do yeah. that one day. Yeah. How does half of you have a birthday and half of you not? Was half of you born at like midnight and then, or like eleven fifty nine, and then the other half didn't come out till midnight? Or yeah, that's really common. Yeah, yeah. that's how that's how that's so how you babies have two work. Days. Yeah. We're born in stages, you see. <laughs> <laughs> David Lamplow says, I hate "Yeah." I hate to admit it, but Flash uh, is playing with my emotions. I love Michael Keaton's Batman, even if it's not comic book accurate. Uh, Batfleck has been criminally underused in DCU, mm -hmm. uh, so it'd be nice to see him get a good showing before leaving. 
It would, but I don't think you're going to get it. Yeah, yeah you're not getting well, much of him. You're going to be shit out of luck for that, my friend. Uh, I think you're going to get five five minutes of him at most, which, again, it just plays into this fucking... Batfleck was underused. I would have loved to see him get his own movie. I'd love to I see mean, what he could have done. Unless he's joking, he said five minutes is what he's in the movie. Mm-hmm. Because everybody was I like, mean, oh, he said it's his best performance as Batman. It's like, if you read the quote, he's being sarcastic. Because he's well, not even yeah, in yeah. the damn movie, yeah, hardly. Yeah. The, 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 only time I've, the only time I've seen him in the trailers, it's all been from the same scene, which makes yeah. me think that he's not very mm-hmm. involved. Which is well, funny, because there's some... another superhero in that scene that we're, you don't, I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah. And none of those reviews will mention anything about Batfleck, like in his yeah. performance, yeah. Uh, Unhinged says every time I get a notification from the drinker, parts of me start to drip. I mean, oh, well, you you're only doctor. human. Is it your nose? You know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you need some Kleenex or something. Yeah. Uh, David Lamplow says if you want to start, uh, if you want to have a good laugh, watch Ryan George's pitch meetings about movies uh, on YouTube. They're hilarious, but actually yeah. point out the flaws of every movie that you all point out in reviews as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love watching yeah. them. They're, yeah, they're yeah. super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Barely an inconvenience, yeah. <laughs> they're great. Absolutely yeah. great. Pitch me. Yeah, I, yeah I, I remember watching some pitch meetings back in the day, about three, three, let's say about three years ago or so, and I just tweeted it. I just tweeted it, Ryan George, and I was just like, dude, you're going to be massive. You're going to be <laughs> fucking massive. This, this, this stuff is hilarious. I love to it's watch his a, evolution where it just got crisper and sharper and funnier um, yeah. over the years. It was so good to watch. Yeah. I like uh, I think my favorite bit is like when he just goes, unclear. You know, yeah. whenever there's like <laughs> yeah, a massive yeah, plot yeah, hole. Yeah, unclear yeah. at this point. <laughs> how'd they do that? Unclear. Okay. I like his, uh, it just goes, okay, it moves on. And I don't know how at what point uh, all the thumbnails just became like massive eyes. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, when, the, when the producer points out a floor and he says, hey, shut up, and just moves on. That's my, yeah. my favorite one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next one is Timothy Finch, who says, bring back Eisner. He may have uh, been a cringe lord, but at least he seemed to actually listen to outside opinions, and the Disney Sunday movie was fun. Michael Eisner, yeah, from Disney. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about, but Bob Iger is going to turn everything around and make it great again, I'm sure. Yay. Uh, Played the High Note says, uh, Leaks of the Flash, I've heard, make it sound god awful. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I guess we we don't really know. We've heard lots of things back and forth. That's kind of what I'm expecting, is that it's going to be a complete mess. Nothing's going to make any sense. It's going to be annoying to watch, but that there'll be moments where I'm like, oh, my kid. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. But a lot of people will say, like, oh, it's really fun, really good. It's like, hmm, okay. Um, Timothy Finch says, what world are we living in where once upon a time S4's uh, Frozen arc was less insulting to the first film than the audience's intelligence than Frozen 2? Um... I don't, I don't get that. Let it go. Let it go. Right, okay. <laughs> Good advice. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, yum Yum Meet Em Up says, uh, Meta Cricket, sorry, Meta Cricket News. <laughs> Meta, Meta Cricket. <laughs> uh, it's going the way of Rotten Tomatoes in policing their user submitted reviews after the Horizon Forbidden West DLC fallout. Hey! Uh, Aloy's gay, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so was they, were they getting review bombed for that? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to bother what um, playing the, the DLC, actually. I, I never played... Um, oh, God, what was it? Because um, there was Horizon Zero, Zo- Zero Dawn, and then they had like a DLC for that. It was like Frozen, Frozen West. Frozen West, yeah. And then you had Forbidden West, and now you've got Burning Shores. Um, yeah, I had that once. Sure. I just had to get a shot. Hey, oh. it right up. Yeah, ah, there's a cream for that. <laughs> nice. Uh, Drubu says, "Can I be your all-time bartender?" Sure, we could do with a bartender here at the open bar. Mm-hmm. I'm running out. Kenan Folderall says, "Just doggo." I mean, yeah. Keep it simple. <laughs> My- Marky Mark frozen and the Funky... Wilds, not Frozen West. Frozen Wilds. Oh, Frozen Wilds, that's it, yeah. Uh, oh, I've Marky seen her Mark strip. And... <laughs> frozen Wilds? 
Yeah. Why did they look well, like Nick Avocado in the second one? <laughs> they did change her facial model a little bit. Yeah. I saw that meme. She's quite oh, she's quite lumpy now, I noticed. And she got glandular fever in the second one. She's a bit like Ray in Last Jedi. She's just uh yeah, you know filled out a bit. I don't know. <laughs> and not in, not but, in the right places. Yeah, I mean I've seen the I've God. I've seen the mods. They they've made all kinds of changes to Aloy. Um Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch says, Have you any of you all played Chrono Trigger? My favourite game of all time. Tons of video game talk lately is making me want to play it again. Maybe link to the past too. Well, there goes my next few days. I mean Chrono Trigger is meant to be one of those all time RPGs. And Link mm. to the Past is awesome as well. Yeah, both fantastic. I never played Chrono Trigger. I have to admit, never played it. Um, Tiberium Hound says, Hi, Drinker, have you read uh, The Retreat by Craig uh, DeLuy? Uh, one of the best horror post-apocalyptic series that I've ever read. The critical doggo cam is very much appreciated as I lost my greyhound. Aww. Aww. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, but yeah, I'm afraid I've not, uh, I've not read uh, The Retreat, so I'm not sure what that is. But uh, yeah, sorry to hear that, my friend. Uh, Asher Dales says KK has a new approach for ruining Star Wars. Wait for a Favreau Filoni project to be successful and then take it over. She needs to be disappeared from Lucasfilm. That's kind of what uh, it seems like. Pretty much. Just, like, yeah. Was everyone just settled on the idea that Favreau isn't in any way to blame for anything that happened with The Mandalorian? Mm. Well, I'm we've not. been pretty much <laughs> hearing that he's out the door, so... Yeah. When are we going to get something about that? Because if he was out, I, I assume they would have announced it by now. Not what? Well, not really. They don't usually announce things like that. I mean, I, I think it was kind of announced when they said that uh, Baloney would be the one directing the Mandalorian movie to wrap all this shit up. I think that was kind of all they needed to say right there. Uh, and then in her, time wait a minute. Right. They're going to yeah. wrap up the stuff which has been wrapped up twice. I don't know. Oh, the one Mandalorian, I Really should wrapped up. Well, it's all leading to whatever they have left over to deal with, basically. And that's kind of what Favreau said in an interview that anything they, have they got. Nothing. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Whatever. It's just kind of going into a de facto empire, era of the empire kind of thing. And then people are going to get disappointed with that and it'll be over. It's going to be. They may as well be starting from scratch with Mando season four. They've gotten absolutely nothing. The most they have in substance, really, is <laughs> as much as they had when they finished episode one of season one. Uh, Mando's with the baby. This stuff going on with Mandalore, but what did we really get from it that wasn't like gettable from just a fucking catch up in the previously? Which is what I, I there's a good chance season four will like actually show that they're heading in a particularly other direction, especially if they're going to be in years from now leading to a Mando movie, a Mandoverse yeah. movie, as though yeah. anyone gives a Ca fuck. I know. I well, can't I don't get know if, my head around that. It's I don't know just, if it's so weird that um, they must have green lit that maybe a year ago when the Mandalorian was still had a positive vibe to it and an energy and freshness uh it just seems like death now to be making a film actually it's more or less a that. compromise i don't know if we'll get a season four i think that's what it whatever he had written for season four would probably get put into that i'm just guessing on that but but wdw oh, pro had re reporting like and that's the thing is like when kathy came back into the fold i don't know how true this is obviously take it with a grain of salt but uh he was told that uh basically kathleen said luke is not coming back. So if you want the baby back, you better figure it out now. So that's why Luke was shoved into the Bo uh, Boba Fett show. That's yeah. what he was told. Hmm. That's a blessing um, in disguise, honestly. I just want it to die. I want it all to die. Kill yes. it. It's, Kill it's, it like a, it's like watching an animal suffering. It's like, just put it out of misery, man. Kill it. Get a Kill fucking flamethrower and burn it if you have to. <laughs> Brother, get the flamer. The get heavy, the heavy flamer. flamer. <laughs> Nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Yeah, I'd say so. Get on that star uh, killer base and get it. Right? It's a big, bigger uh, ball. Take out I will all say, the planet. though, don't care if it's controversial or anything. Give me Andor oh. season two first and then... then yeah, I would say that. I would say that. Um, I want to see more about the dead guy in the prequel, in his prequel. You'd fucking like died. it if you watched it as the the. the I watched the first episode. Anyway. I was born off my tits. 
yeah, well, that's not all of it. Watch the first ten episodes, and then you'll get somewhere. That's, well, just that's skip when to the stuff prison happens. Arc. Skip to As prison I keep arc. saying, it. it's not my responsibility to watch your show. It's your responsibility to make me want to watch your show. So if your well, show we're is telling, boring, we're, we're saying then... it's good, so that should <laughs> yeah. make you want to watch it. Yeah, but proof's in the pudding. I saw the first episode. Yeah, but we're telling you the first episode is not representative, right? Mm. Yeah. That's what uh, they gave me. <laughs> Next one is from Waddle D's Nuts. Says, afternoon, gents. So has the doggo ever barked in her sleep? Um, they've growled quite a few times in their sleep. And there was one time, actually, just recently, I was uh, um, flying over to Dublin for the weekend, and I had to get up at like 5 a.m. for my flight. And so slept at the opposite end of the house from the dogs, got up real quiet and I just like, you know, went, went to get changed and stuff. And like, sure enough, they fucking heard me from the opposite side of the house and just fired up and started barking for some reason. They wow. wasn't thought there was an intruder. <laughs> Normally they don't, they don't give a shit, but yeah, that, that just, uh, they didn't like that at all. Um, Derek says, Kathleen Kennedy and Jennifer Salkey are proof that some producers actually care more about ideology than money. KK seems determined to push her forces female nonsense, even if she has to burn Lucasfilm to the ground in the process. I can't argue that with point. that, actually, based I on what I've seen. It's pretty spot on, yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind of feels as well like this is the end game. Like, she knows she's going to be leaving relatively soon, one way or the <laughs> other. And it's just like, I'm just going to... Just fuck you. I'm just going to put everything I can into this. Absolutely, yeah. She's got a yeah. few more franchises to destroy first. She's looking at the list like, I'm nearly there, guys. Just give me more. Well, me more yeah. Guys. Torched Star Wars, Torched Willow, in the process well, of torching Indiana Jones. So, mm -hmm. yeah. There's she did a there. great job torching Star Wars, and then Favor had to come and fuck that up. See? So, like, she had to come back and <laughs> fix that problem. So, yeah. 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 Fire Gina Carano. Bring the baby back. There you go. Problem solved. You just you, you have to ask yourself like, would it not be better f in terms of your own legacy to just get out? You know, like people could remember you for being producer on all these amazing Steven Spielberg movies from the eighties and nineties. You know, you did the the early Indiana Jones movies, you did Jurassic Park, you did Schindler's List, all this awesome stuff. You know, and people could kind of forget some of the problems with Star Wars if you just got out. But if you insist on making more and more stuff. There's more and more failures that's going to like balance the scales against your legacy. Why keep doing it? The accolade, if not just pure malicious fucking hatred. Like that mm -hmm. seems to be all it is at this point. Like but she's made it abundantly clear she hates old Star Wars fans. Made that that's what, clear. That, yeah, I mean, I'm willing to entertain any other like explanation if you've got one. But like that's what it seems to come down to. It's like I know you've rejected what I've made for you, so I'm just going to shovel more of it down your throat until well, that's clearly, all there is. They've listened and understood. We've got the Ray movie on the way wait a minute. <laughs> Finally, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still holding out for a Rose Tico movie. <laughs> <laughs> Give me so what they really want. Ray, uh, no, so uh, Rose Tico with Reva. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Now we're talking. Go back in time and kill Luke because he's the cause of all of the badness. Really, so if you put think about it, if Reva and Rose Tico get together, then that means their their coupled name would be Revcore. Because I already figured Revco. out that, or Revco. That's it. Yes, thank you. Because because uh, Ray and Grogu together is uh, is Ray Goo. So like, oh my god, so it's like a, a, an Italian Ray pasta Goo. dish or something. Yeah, bring out the Italian. It is. Anyone, it does. Anyone want a bowl of Ray Goo? Like, absolutely. <laughs> Sounds just like it's something I want to eat. Or possibly if Ray gets too excited. Uh, I mean, I've worked, with, I've worked with and dated enough women like Kathleen Kennedy. They are determined to burn shit on the way out if they can't win. Right? Like, that. that's the way they think. It's like, if I'm not going to win, then I'm pulling the whole thing down with me on the way out. And that's, I Great. think that's kind of what she's doing at this point. It's nice to see that, like... 200 year old like industry veterans like her can still be immature fucking children at heart they are they are <laughs> they absolutely right. are um play the high note says the worst race swap ever was benedict cumberbatch as khan in star trek into darkness <laughs> yes. yes i yep. fucking agree with that <laughs> <Indian> sing <laughs> who's going to be yep. indian 
Uh, yeah, he was meant to be Indian. He was played by like a Puerto Rican, I think. Puerto Rican. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Ricardo Montalban. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Ricardo Montalban can do anything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> With that chest, he can do anything. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I would let him do anything. I well. know. Yes. <laughs> oh, he had me questioning my sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. There's some fucking impressive titties there, man. <laughs> Uh, it was great, but uh, yeah, like what? A, what a terrible downgrade! It's uh, my yeah. name is Khan. What? We, we so, got the, we got so the TV what? version of Khan for for this movie. Um, well, the whole the whole thing with that is that uh, the pseudonym that his character was going under was actually a different Star Trek character. And so they thought the whole reveal as him as Khan would be such a big, oh! Mm. And it wasn't. His reveal was, was, so, it was so shit. It was really so Khan. unearned. It was so fucking shit. Well, yeah, cheap. there was two levels to it. First of all, it was unearned. It made no sense in the, in, the, in the whole point of the story. And then plus, on top of it all, J.J. Abrams lied his fucking ass off to everybody about it. It's like, yep. dude, you're caught, right? It's like a was on me. You're not Shaggy, dude. You're caught. We all know it's Khan. The problem is now you got to admit that it's freaking stupid. It makes no sense. Like, he might as well just been John Harrison at that point. Yeah. Because, yeah, it mm -hmm. makes no sense. Whenever I hear that name as well, all I can think is Peter Weller's horrible line delivery where he's like, yeah, oh. we need you to hand over John Harrison. <laughs> 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 I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> But it must have been a jump for you audiences. Couldn't, and... You couldn't have got him to ADR that line or anything. No. <laughs> it's just like you had to go with it. The only good thing about that film was Alice Eve. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. Well, there was also, as someone who didn't know anything about Star Trek, when he said, I am Khan, I was sitting there like, wow, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what their reaction should have been as well. Having, I'm going having to be watched the Wrath of soon. Yeah, having watched Wrath of Khan now, Mauler, what what did you think of Benedict Cumberbatch's portrayal? Of the I don't character? remember it anymore. <laughs> like it's been replaced. <laughs> like not that it was. A, I mean, I'd have to rewatch that film, but I, somehow I don't imagine I'm going to think it's anywhere near as fucking good. As well. The whole thing with Khan ever. is is Khan is exceedingly charismatic, and mm -hmm. Benedict Cumberbatch played like a boring blank slate of a person. <laughs> Right? I mean, you Benedict original... Cumberbatch always looks like a normal person that's gone into anaphylactic shock somehow. <laughs> His face has gone all lumpy and weird. <laughs> You've got the original Space Seed episode, though, where he's right. Because like, the original version of Khan in that is Ricardo Montalban. He's just suave as fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah. he smacks a bitch and he's like, leave. Or it stay makes if sense. You want. It makes sense. <laughs> this, it, it makes yeah. sense that this is why people followed him. You know, he's kind of, you know, your, your Jim Jones y type yeah. of. Uh, charismatic uh, cult leader, and this is so you could. He yeah. had to be charismatic because you had to understand and appreciate how people would would flock to this man's beliefs and cause. And even a member of the Enterprise, of course, decides to go off with him. That's what moment. they do to show us that. Marlon exactly. MacGyver's, yeah. yeah. Mm. But in 1982, it must have been so weird and difficult for audiences. Here's the guy from Fantasy Island. Who's now playing? Yeah, uh, the plan, the the plan. <laughs> yeah. Well, the beauty of it was that Star Trek was in endless syndication, right. so chances are most people knew who Khan was, mm. right? Like the, um, that the, was the, the scene. Of it. The scene with the earworms and the wrath of Khan. That was the single most terrifying thing from my childhood to see that scene of the, the worms going into the air. I could. I had to sleep like. Pillows with next to my ears because I was terrified <laughs> those creatures. Well, I think that was the first time that you you thought to yourself, "Oh, Star Trek can be quite like mm. bad and and nasty and and disgusting." You know, like you never really got that in the original series because it was all very sanitized and nineteen sixties, you know, optimism ish. Uh, yeah. But this was the first time where it's like a bit of like nineteen eighties body horror mixed well, in with it, mm. and it was like what well, made shit? it worse like, to this me is terrifying. Is the story we get before it because we find out that's what killed his wife, but you're not now he's using them, them to get information out of those guys. It's like, oh, yeah, mm. <laughs> no, it's it's it, like I think always everyone always um finds that terrifying because it's the fact that like it's inside these space helmets that they can't yeah. then oh, get off, God. like they can't reach yeah. in, they can't defend themselves. It's just like, ugh. yeah, mm. awful. and when the captain kills himself, yeah, yeah, yeah that's as well. 
But then interspersed with, you know, references to a tale of two cities and Moby Dick and all those lovely little literary elements as well. Just the push. Sure, yeah, from hell's heart I stab I stab at thee. For hate's yep. sake, I spit my last breath at thee. And they never shared That's... a scene. Never shared a scene, Khan and, nope. and Kirk. They uh, filmed actually yeah, like home. months apart because like the, mm -hmm. the Reliant Bridge was just the Enterprise Bridge, just slightly redone. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> the whole thing was done on that really tight budget. This was the thing, yeah. like they didn't have much money to spare because the motion picture hadn't been a success mm. and they spent a lot of money on that. And they said, like, mm. the only way we can do another Star Trek movie is if we slash the budget and you've got to come in uh, mm. at a really economical level. And they had to pull all kinds of tricks to make it to make it work but then you would never know from watching it because it looks great when mm. shatner says i know a couple of day players yeah. sulu <laughs> yeah. yeah you throw like loads of money at stuff and production line it ends up being worse and looking worse and ended up like less critically appraised than something that has way less of a budget loads uh, way less time but people who care people who give a shit so the fascinating. Right the... look at, well, yeah, look at um, the the Star Trek like the remake series. the the en The engineering section of the Enterprise was filmed in a fucking brewery, like an <laughs> actual brewery, and that's why you've got all these big industrial pipes and everything everywhere. Right. Like that's yeah. all it was. Like yeah. they didn't they didn't construct a set for it, but like the sets that you had in the the movies, okay, they were relatively cheap, but they they fulfilled their purpose they actually looked like they were part of a starship mm. this just looked like a generic factory somewhere it's huge yeah. you know like the, it, the everything's like in congress nothing makes any kind of logical sense well, as an engineering section on a starship it's just stuff like jj abrams that's his gimmick right just make it bigger it doesn't have to make sense like why in the world would you make a planet into basically a big death star like it makes no effing sense whatsoever, right? But it doesn't matter because it's bigger than the last one. That's all that JJ knows how to do. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even make sense to him. I mean, at least Pelican. most. What? Oh, sorry. sorry. No, no, go ahead. Well, with JJ, I was going to say it felt like I was watching his work in Mando, and it was like, look, it's an army of Mandos. This is an army of evil Mandos. There's hundreds yeah. of Mandos all over the screen. <laughs> you look Boba Fett. Now there's a thousand of them. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. JJ's yeah. entire career is standing on the shoulders of geniuses. Mm -hmm. To accomplish yes. something as fast as he can, I and never want to even knew what he has. He has he's patented and packaged it and passed and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and mm. there he goes. He's mm -hmm. selling it to us. That's, the, that's the screenwriter. All the man is. Screenwriter for um, Breath of Khan. He wrote that in six weeks. He put that script yep. together. Well, that's the amazing. funny yep. thing about that whole thing with Ricardo is they went deep into pre-production before they ever thought. To, well, maybe we should see if Ricardo Montalban is <laughs> available. <laughs> Or still alive. And they were afraid yeah. that he would find out that they already were that far because then they knew his agent would demand a higher price. But like, I think mm -hmm. the bigger problem was I think he was still shooting Fantasy Island at the time. So that's why he came in later because he had to finish shooting for the season and then he came in in the break, if I remember right, was why he had to shoot his stuff much later than the rest of the guys. But The, uh, the scene in Ratha Khan where they do um, the illustrating the Genesis project on that film clip, that still looks great. Those yeah. well, that's ILM like that. CGI, man. The orange yeah. glow that goes over the planet and that shows the the terraforming it looks great. It's from nineteen eighty. It's a nice Did, little CGI sequence. And like, don't they yeah, use the yeah. Pixar computer for that too? If I remember right, I can't remember now, but I think they did. I don't know. But yeah, it was one of the, some of the first uh, CGI. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's, uh, it's, and, um, well, Kirstie the, Alley the, is Kirstie Alley. Oh my god! Yes. Uh -huh. Kirstie Alley is just great. Yeah. Mm. As have yeah. a moment there. I, am, my emotions. I just remember seeing that that emotionless Vulcan woman. I was like, I want all my women never to have any emotion. <laughs> the world would be like an easier it. place. Oh, that hell was yeah. the case. Fuck. The only thing that movie was missing was a scene where she was like braless. Yes. And we, we got a bit of nipple, <laughs> but like. Yeah. yeah. There's a That's slight okay. little bit of flirtation in the, in the turbo elevator where he says, Commander, are you wearing your hair differently? And she says, It's due regulation. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. The only oh, thing. James Kirk, you dirty well, That's a Falcon you. way of saying I'm glad line, you though. noticed. Line, yeah, I'd like yeah. to jump your bones now. Yeah. <laughs> he was probably banging her behind the scenes. Like, sh go on, Shatner. Of course he was. Peak Shatner. <laughs> All right, and I'm fine with coming. that. Yeah. 
Uh, here's a here's one that came in. Uh, Disney fundamentally doesn't mesh well with Star Wars. As such, they have yes. sunk almost every old male lead and character, even the new ones that they've created have created themselves and have tried replacing them with Disney princesses. Yes, mm. and well, look how it's look how <sighs> well that's worked I out mean, for them. At this point, Disney doesn't mesh well with storytelling. You should stop. <clears throat> like every so aspect. Or yeah. I think if you, if your attitude is like I fundamentally hate the the past i hate traditional storytelling i hate traditional um you know ideals of characters Family archetypes values in general yeah and like i want to i want to undo all of that well you better replace it with something pretty fucking spectacular if you're going to supersede that and you know if you're just a talentless hack who who's been given participation trophies their whole lives and told they're amazing that ain't going to happen and that's pretty much what we have in terms of disney writers here so it's no wonder that the their storytelling ends up the way it has. Mm -hmm. They don't well, have they, the, only, they don't have the creativity to replace it with anything better. They only know how to cater to the female audience. So basically, the 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 fix here for them is to make everybody female. So. <laughs> Fucking, there are girls in the audience right now. Like, what do you mean? That's <laughs> shit. I know. I'm just joking. It was a joke to make the whole like. Yeah. That's yeah. why they're putting all this propaganda. I, I, I just think, want to make um, every boy want to be a girl. That's all it is. Paul, uh, what, Paul Chato. Yeah, he, he did a great video on this. Actually, yeah. yeah, it was it was it's definitely worth watching for you guys in the audience. Um, just like it's called like Disney's princess problem, and like they yep. tried to port that idea of the the Disney princess who's empowered and can do everything, and they tried to port that into every genre and every uh, franchise that they own, and you can't keep doing it. It doesn't work with everything. How many antidepressants do you think Kathleen Kennedy takes? <laughs> All of them. Still, All she of just gets them. an injection of ten thousand dollars every day. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so she does speak a load of AIDS. Yeah. Yeah. Disco Stew here says cinnamon booby snatch is terrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For play, man. I get that reference. Nice. Uh, Doctor Mob says panel. Are there any sci-fi books that you would like to see adapted into a film or a TV show that haven't been done already, assuming they were adapted with the same quality as shows like The Expanse? I think the Star Carrier series would be good as an example. Chronicles of Pern and McCaffrey. Nice. Anyone else? Can't think of anything. Uh, <clears throat> I did enjoy The Expanse. That was a good show. Yeah, that was good. I've never read the book, so I don't know how it compares to them. But uh, as a show, I thought it was it was good. It was good sci-fi. Mm. Penthouse Forum. That's pretty sad. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm uh, sure there's plenty of them that have been done to shit that can be done better, actually. Um, yeah. uh, Reaper says, Hail everyone. Mauler, I'm going through the entirety of EFAP, and I just finished episode 25 with Major Lee, and my head hurts now. <laughs> I want to cry and I need a drink. Love you all and hope you all have a good day. Do you know he said in that little debate that he was uh, he was looking forward to how in, this was when TLJ had just came out. He's like, I'm looking forward to in Rise of Skywalker the uh, Kylo and Rey are gonna hook up, and we were all like, what the fuck? Like, what? <laughs> why, why would that? And he's like, they're probably gonna kiss or whatever. And just like, no, why the hell would that happen? Um, yeah, because he got his <laughs> in Return of. The, the, the last of the return jedis the got, last of the so, return jedis <laughs> so, so she looked at him and she was just like oh he might have killed billions of people but look at them pecs yo let's What's skype it? i mean they like, it, was, it was called a, a kiss of like respect or something or a kiss of understanding <laughs> uh, I thought that was called sexual assault. Whoa, 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 <laughs> That's not how the force works. 
<laughs> well, apparently so. Apparently it is. <laughs> well, I was just saying, like, because the whole thing about, like, this new Ray movie that's coming out is she supposedly has a kid. I said, oh, yeah, the kid will be, like, 15, 20 years old or whatever, 15, because they said it's going to be 15 years ahead. And we're going to come to find out that the kid is actually the son of Kylo. And when he brought her back to life or whatever, he actually impregnated her with the Force. Right. He fully yep. impregnated her. Yep. Oh, and, yeah, and this is that, the Force, then. baby. Yeah, because was... actual sex is icky, and we don't want to show that. We don't want to oh, show any kind of sexual too. desire exactly, between yes, human they beings. They can't actually have sex now. That yeah, that's the only way they can have a baby. But then also, this saves the Skywalker bloodline because nobody was smart enough to realize, oh shit, we just killed all the Skywalkers off. <laughs> yeah, I'm I just right. did a video on the. I just did a video on the the strange sexlessness of uh, the modern heroines. From Galadriel to Captain Marvel to uh, Rey Skywalker, there's there's no romance, no sensuality, no sexuality. Of any nah, they're kind. all big fat lesbians. Well, I, I tell you why, because any kind I of attractiveness sexual. towards a man, like any idea that they might desire a man, means that they are somehow indebted to him, like they need or him. And so, yes, count. Yeah, that's what you said in your video. Yeah, and like that can't be allowed. Because that would be an element of weakness to that character. And so even that can't be permitted in modern storytelling. And so they have to either be gay or they have to be as uh, asexual <laughs> and uh, and genderless as fucking an android or something. You know, like, there's just nothing permitted anymore. Droid lives matter. I saw um, they do. There, there was a tweet saying, like, you know, uh, respond with your favorite hot scenes that aren't sex scenes. And one of the most upvoted ones was... Uh, from Mask of Zorro, and I was like, "Yeah, I know exactly which one you're going to be talking about." Yeah. Uh... Well, even look at look at Han and Leia in Empire Strikes Back when they're in the Millennium Falcon together. They're like, you know, they're they're working together. And that little... mm. It's it's sexual desire. That's what it is. It's mm -hmm. raw sexual desire. He wants her. She she doesn't want to like give in to him. And there's a bit of back and forth. And that's the that's the dynamic of courtship. You know, mm -hmm. the, there's the there's a bit of a fight to it. But again, you can't show that now yeah. because that implies, so, that implies surrender and that implies compromise, yes. like you would say, yeah. Echo. And the idea of you, allowed. you of hitting on someone or making a move or, or upping the stakes, that's sort of been taken out of the dynamic now. And so if it's Han and Leia, you get people saying now that, oh, he's wearing her down and he's getting into her personal space and it's it's dated and it's not from the oh, I wonder what that was going. They he's overlooked the fact. <laughs> per, 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 per personal space. Remember, Henry Cavill said, he talked about this and he said, like, he dared to suggest, like, women kind of enjoy the chase. They like yeah. being pursued by a man yeah, and, like, knows, he yeah. has to kind of win them over. And it's a pretty old old-fashioned chivalrous view of like courtship mm -hmm. and stuff like the man makes the first move and he's got to try and like win the woman over the thrill uh, of the but, hunt. but yeah. that made him you know persona non grata like you can't say that you can't suggest that women want to be pursued it has to be she's in control of everything or whatever it's like two fucking robots interfacing with each other uh, on mutually yeah. agreed terms that have to be mm -hmm. signed by like 50 different people in advance and ev everything has to be worked out. But this uh, is just Western they... cinema. This is just Western cinema. Yeah, exactly. Every but other that... cinema, completely different. But I don't know about yeah. the droid thing because R2 is definitely the top and C-3PO is the bottom. Oh, C-3PO is definitely the bottom. Definitely the bottom. Definitely the bottom. Um, R2, but no, R2 like the other thing that... Giving it to yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing that people forget to bring up to. in the arguments about the whole Han Han and Leia bit, Leia is actually in a place of authority over Han. They never bring that mm -hmm. part up, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's the thing. Well, it's like you get they well, overlook again, that. Well, again, like he's he's a character like on paper she's got authority over him because she you know she's uh, in a position of command. She's uh, she's royalty. But he's a rogue, and he doesn't give a shit about that, and he kind of That's mocks beautiful. her. Yeah. He calls her like "Your Highness," like you know, uh, yeah. sarcastically. I am not a part of a committee. They call it your worship at one. Like, yeah, exactly. And he's making fun of her because it's so pompous and so stupid. But like that's the yeah. dynamic of their relationship, and it's it's fun. It makes him like a, an interesting character. It makes that's her hurting. an interesting yeah. character. But again, you wouldn't be allowed to show that now. Well, well the idea the... is that there's a, a conflation between, uh, well, no distinction between sex, being sexually aggressive or being sexually assertive. And those are two different things, but now they're both removed and you can't have either. Yeah. 
Well, now you just get these weird, bland, yeah, like, pared down characters that are just not not even, like, recognizable as humans. So well, there's one scene in The Mandalorian where they had in the background, just like for one second, there's a couple of robots, like, in an alleyway. And like one of them is like getting into the other's personal space and kind of flirting with the other robot. So you got the robots being more sexual <laughs> than the actual uh, human characters. Strange. Yeah, and the whole Han and Leia thing is a throwback to old Hollywood kind of romances, yeah. right? You have the the rogue buccaneer type mm -hmm. who has no time for whamming, but like he knows he's dashing and debonair, and he's like, "I know you want me." And you have like the princess or the you know the the, the socialite type who's always like, "Well." I would never with you. Of course not, you know, but obviously there's that sexual tension there. And that's what people want is eventually to see them collide, you know, one way or another. And then even in Star Wars, we don't have to see the sex to know that there's that palpable sexual tension there. And it comes to a great climax when she says, I love you. And what does he say back? I know. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. Yeah. I mean, he's the, the bad boy. He's the bad boy. Exactly. The bad boy that the ladies love as opposed to Kylo Ren. Who is the genocidal psychopath? He's Kevin Smith. So Ray is Palpatine's granddaughter. So she yeah. was getting more action than, uh, than pretty much everyone else. So I mean, Palpatine like, fucks, which was zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Creamy Sheev. That's Wouldn't all. That's what you always I, refer to him as. I saw the I saw the <laughs> clip where he's lying on the ground and she's like the kissing. Would it be great if he just put his hand up on a tit? Man's got a copper feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's I'm like, dying. what are you doing? He's like, I'm, I'm gonna dying. die, whatever. I'm dying. You can't oh, be yeah. too me, I'm already dead. Yeah. Well, remember um remember in the mummy, right, when Brendan Fraser grabs Rachel Vice like, when he's in prison mm -hmm. and he's like yes. she can buy his release and he grabs her and fucking kisses her totally against mm -hmm. her will. But yeah. When he ex he's asked to explain it afterwards, he's like, "Yeah, I thought it was going to be hang, so it seemed like a good idea at the time." <laughs> like you know, that, because yeah. Yeah. about romancing it's the great. stone where they slide down the uh, the embankment and <laughs> Michael Douglas lands between her legs and just comes up. Yeah. And goes, <laughs> 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 it's That's great. problematic now, as because yeah. even somebody like uh, Whedon couldn't get away with that with the whole Flash thing. Remember, because that was oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just any kind of romance, any kind of sexual chemistry is just fucking dead. It's just a mm -hmm. bunch of ro androids fucking communicating with each other. That's Why do you think got they got Pando Lando going after robots now? He can't be hitting on women. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, going to get shocks. Just before we carry on, um, I, I wanted to um, give an opportunity for some of my mods to like join us on the stream just for you know a little while at the end of this because these guys do amazing work uh for me every every week when i do these open bars and they don't often get the you know the recognition that they deserve because it's pretty pretty tough work you know um weeding out the the troublemakers in chat so i just yeah, wanted to bring chat. some of them in yeah yeah. I'm not blaming you, chat. There's always a few bad apples. He totally but you, just you're mostly, you, chat. He just you're totally mostly like, lovely threw people. You right under the bus. Yeah. But anyway, I've got two of them here who are available, so I'm going to bring them in. Uh, we've got Lance from the Outcast Creative. The, the critical dog was excited about this too. I yeah. can tell. <laughs> He's showing his respect. Yeah. Uh, and we've got the we've got Joshua Levesque as well, who's one of my mods. So, uh, gentlemen, welcome to this stream. Thank you. Uh, for coming I thought on. we were just coming on to get um, the tit wank of knowledge, so I'm ready for mine. <laughs> if, I, if I just pull my t shirt. Yeah. Up. Uh, There's oh, always oh. that opportunity as well. <laughs> oh. uh, we will do our best. Uh, oh, but yeah, I waited all night for that. Yeah. Hey, Will. Thank no, you uh, for having us on. Yeah. No, thank you, man. Thank you for coming on for this, and thank you for like. Well, really, all the shit that you do every every week when we do these open bars, because uh, I know it's a tough job. I it's think Josh is the, he's the faster guy with the hammer. I'm the one who keeps sticking everyone's links up and smashing the like button and all that. He's he's really fast at getting the bad guys out of the room. Josh yeah. is. Well, it's it's all appreciated because you, for all of us who who do these streams, like uh, you know, Mower. Um, as you know we all have our mod teams who help us with this stuff because it's more than we can cope with at the time when we're trying to do the stream and we're trying to talk to people banning people and, and keeping an eye on chat is always a difficult thing so it's it's always good to have mods favorite. on as well wow you're very welcome and uh thanks for keeping us entertained for uh hours on end uh, especially in the 
the dark times of the pandemic, which was a proper godsend, let me tell you. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> it wasn't the most fun time for anyone, I guess. No. Um, no. Boy, yeah. And that was when we started our, our channel, actually, and um, that was partly inspired by yourself, as you know. So uh, I'll always be grateful for that. And um, can't quite get to the same number of subscribers but i'm loving doing it and i, I have a lot of fun with it so um it's it's you know it's it's a good uh, i've got the dop from the director of photography from of the goonies coming on in a couple of weeks nice great so that yeah. so that's going to be a pretty interesting um guest and the first ad from all three back to the future films is coming on the channel as well so oh nice so i'm keeping right. the focus on behind the scenes crew interviews that kind of thing is what we what we're doing as we all, most of us work in the industry on the, on the outcast, so I managed to bag them. So that I've got be... Jesus on this week's real BBC. <laughs> ah, well, <laughs> can't cope, can't. Com I was going to say we can't compete with Russell Crowe. He is Jesus, isn't he? Um, but, I mean, uh, he, he was Moses. So Zeus. Was... <laughs> and Zeus. Same, same thing. And... I know. I say he was Noah. What am I saying, Moses? Jerome, <laughs> yeah. He could do Moses. I, I think you could play. You gotta hold a Jesus though, as man. It always takes me three days to raise him. Hey! Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I like wanted to say you. thank you to to you, Lance, as well he because nearly, when I he nearly passed me over. I, I met up with you. Oh. Hey. Sorry, sorry, Will, go on. Yeah, I met up with you when I was down in London. We had a few points together, and you were kind enough to give me a fantastic gift. You gave me the Reliant. Wow. I and did. it's here oh, on my desk. Oh, it's it's beautiful. nice. This is a really nice scale model of it, and you gave that to me oh, as a little yes. gift, so I appreciate it. Uh, so it's yeah, I, just it, as well because the company that made them have gone Eagle Moss. now. So, yeah, um, Eagle Moss. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got partial fucking Enterprise D. Yeah, well, one of <sighs> one of the actors in our rehearsal today just broke my brain ship. They they were waving their script about, and they knocked it off the stand, and it's now oh. in three pieces. So, um, oh. yeah, I no, fucking ask him. This is what you. Ha this is what happens when you rehearse in your kitchen. So, <laughs> but there you go. Um, no, you're very welcome, man, and thanks for thanks for the drink in Scotland. That was a good laugh and all. Oh, that was good. Yeah, I was pretty keen that night. By the time you I were, met, yeah. you were, you were a bit <laughs> more serious lie. about you. You were on your home territory there, <laughs> so you were in very comfortable settings. And uh, I was out with Billy, who who can drink anyone under the table. So I felt very outmatched. Uh, it was uh, well, it's cheap drinks in my hometown. So what can I say? You get you get keen pretty quickly. Um, I've well, got a, I've got a question for Az. Are you looking forward to the new Doctor Who? I think, I, I think I might have just lit up with excitement. I think I might have I'm just curious. I mean, I know. I'll take I know, that as a no. I know you're. I, I feel. Original... I feel like the the critical doggo says it best. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the reaction. Yeah, I think based off all these casting choices, I I uh, oh god. Yeah, I'm good. I think I'm good. I think scandalous. The critical doggo is muted. Come yeah. On, what's this? It, it kind of is, yeah. Drink uh, is sabotaging the doggo. Uh, <laughs> as who is your favourite doctor? Capaldi. Okay, interesting. Mm. Yeah, I, I just I, I just think Capaldi is such a great actor, and I think he he just exemplified. He put so many different versions of the Doctor, I think, into his performance, but still made it wholly his and wholly original. And I thought he what he did with such terrible scripts at terrible times scripts exactly yeah was was, in, was incredible and that's that's a that's a person with real talent elevating yeah. elevating some bad material. I wish um, he'd been cast in it earlier. Actually, yes, was, yeah, 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 yeah. Much so. If he if yeah. he'd like took over from let's say Tennant, let's say took over from Tennant, yeah, um, then we could have had I think Moffat and and Capaldi that era, yeah, would have, would have been would have been incredible. Yeah, um, but yeah, he's. I think Capaldi's just an awesome actor in general. Um, I've always loved his work. I thought he was absolutely phenomenal of Children of Earth, Torchwood Children of Earth. Um, Have you seen the Lair of the White Worm? As no, oh mate, you want to check that out? That's a, a old school horror film from the eighties with uh, Capaldi in it. Yeah, I think that'd be right up your street. It's a bit of a weird film because it's Ken Russell. 
Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, I mean, you know, lots of women in stockings. And I mean, I'm sure that won't bother you too much. But um, I'll, I'll cope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it's, it, it's a weird we horror make. film, but it's got a couple of proper cool scenes in it. And the, mm. the scene with the snake is, I'll leave that there. But it's, uh, <laughs> you want to track that, you want to track that one down, Will, and do a review of that. I, I feel yeah, like I've seen it like way back in the day. There's got there's a lot of like quite surreal horror sequences in it, and I'm sure there's yeah. like massacre like scenes and stuff. It's quite uh, yeah, it pretty is. intense stuff. Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a bit out there that one, but worth worth checking out for the. Is it like movie. Patrick Stewart's uh, appearance in Life Force? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. It's actually it came out around the same time as Life Force. I think I think it was the same. <laughs> I when, when I think of Life Force, it, it's not it's not Patrick Stewart that I remember <laughs> from that movie. That's you know that was Patrick Stewart's first on screen kiss. Is, is it is it, <laughs> Matilda, is it Matilda May that you Matilda uh, May? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is, yeah. 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 Two great moments in particular, I think. Is she I had think. a couple of great moments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like Fall. There's a couple of reasons I enjoyed that movie so much. You know, like by the way, Life Force. I gotta say, is a really fun film. It's yeah. a really fun. You know. Matilda May's incredible breasts aside, and I don't want to put them aside. I, uh, <laughs> it's it's just a very fun sort of take on a vampire zombie whole thing, and it just ends in like a Keystone Cop sequence, which is really funny as well. Yeah, they were doing yeah. a lot of cocaine when they made that film. <laughs> well, it's canon, yeah. isn't it? So there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the best way to make movies. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're discovering is the lack of cocaine has destroyed Hollywood at this point. That's what yeah. I've said before. Big time. Cocaine and capitalism, we need it to come back. Coke cap. Yeah. Yeah, that was the best time in Hollywood. It's like, uh, it was, it, Canon more, knew more, how so. to do it. Just give you more boobs and explosions. That's all you yeah. need. Give give the people what they want, you know. Uh, I'll do a and couple Charles more super Bronson. chats here. Superman just before we... Quest for Peace is canon as well. Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I saw that at the cinema. I'm afraid. Well, we were the boobs in that. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the great thing yeah. is that Canon knew they were going bankrupt. You know, they couldn't mm. stop it. For like three years, they knew that. You add cocaine into that, it's just, it's a free-for-all. It's just... Like, <laughs> well, they were set up on a system that would have kept working if they hadn't gotten involved in, like, I don't know, the mob. <laughs> 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 that's kind of what yeah. messed everything up. Is, that would that yeah. would drag most people down, to be fair. Because that's where um, all the money started getting laundered, yeah. All right. Uh, I, I did not know that part of the story. There's some pretty great documentaries out there about. I've Canon seen the two. Actually. I've seen the two yeah. documentaries. They're fantastic. And uh, um, there's the Canon Film Guide and some other things out there. There's some good stuff to to read up on it. But it's interesting history. Yeah, the, the they were they they were they pre-sold a lot of their movies initially. That's how they got started. Yeah. Uh, and then they just kind of over overspent and got involved with the wrong folks. Yep. Um. I'm going to do a couple more super chats here. Uh, Mapel says, if you're in need of a good guest on Open Bar, I would highly recommend and would love. Because <laughs> 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 what we've got here is the fucking dross of YouTube right now. <laughs> it's okay. We ran out of opportunities. We just went to the bottom of the barrel. and uh, I, was like, there. I was who, there. Who can right we scrape up right oh, I now? thought that was our introduction. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, but they are saying they would love Rob Ager from Collective. Sorry, Collective Learning. He started just after Red Letter Media. I'm not yeah. not too familiar with uh, Collective I, Learning, really. actually. Um, Mr. Taco Boutique says, "Crucify me," but the new Taika Waititi movie looks good. What is the Which new Taika movie? Oh, yeah, I think it's just one. Uh, not sure what the name. Yeah. Of I think it's gone back to his New Zealand roots or something, and it's it's supposed to have a and you know that soccer movie, yeah, a very positive vibe to it, and he just wanted to go in the indie direction. Maybe that's no, it's, that's his thing, like yeah, it's no secret. It's, when he gives a shit, you'll get something good out of him, typically. Yeah. Next goal wins. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So. Yeah. Doesn't okay. Jojo Rabbit seem like a long, long time ago now? It, it really does. does. God, it really doesn't does. it? I Hunt for the world of people, and that just seemed like a lifetime ago. It's actually unbelievable that the man who made uh, Jojo Rabbit made Love and Thunder when they're probably yeah. the two examples I would pick on either end of the scale of balancing tone. I would be like, yeah. that's how to do it, yeah. that's how not to do it. It's like, how the fuck does the same person do that? You yeah. saw, Come you on, saw the Mall, it's a comedy about shadows, cancer. Right? But he, he didn't write Jojo Rabbit, did he? He just directed it. No, but it's still... Uh, well, it, was, it was based so off a, a well. novel. Uh, a novel yeah. by Chris Yeah, it's like adapted, which I think yeah, you still yeah. get credit for. I want to credit I think he won the Oscar, actually, for the adapted screenplay for it. 
Hmm. Yes, did, yes, he did, did an excellent oh, okay. job with the movie, but um, yeah, <laughs> it's because it, you know you you watch the behind the scenes stuff. It's clear he didn't give a fuck about Love and Thunder, and uh, mm. he did give a fuck about Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, too much money headed yeah. his way, I guess. Yeah. Uh, okay. The next one is um, Brendo Fire says, "Are you guys going to see the Iron Lung movie?" I don't even. Well, know that's that um, that's the Markiplier movie. That he's he's involved with, involved oh, with. I don't think he's I don't think he's like directing or anything. He's uh, I think he stars and he's producing. <clears throat> I think. Um, okay. I'll be curious. I like Markiplier. He's, he seems like a stand-up dude. I've never interested. Watched a Markiplier video in my life. I used to back in the day, back when I was obsessed with Amnesia. So twenty more yeah. eleven, something like that. So it's um, been a while. <laughs> yeah. Khaled Nasef says, as an Egyptian and even Alexandrian, personally, I think this whole situation is ridiculous. Yes, Cleopatra was Mediterranean, but let's be honest here, there are more important conversations to be had. Uh, but he doesn't say what those conversations are. I was just seeing if he had a, a follow-up, but uh, no, apparently not. Um, Garrett not Hayden says, yeah. Uh, Hello, Drinker. I had a question I posed towards uh, Real BBC that I now pose to this panel. I'm creating a sci-fi universe with its own cultures, languages, and lore, which I'm writing a manga series for. Uh, and there's a part two somewhere. Uh, and I can't see it. Okay. That's weird. Um, okay. Unless he's posted it way later and it's like escaped my, my sight on this one. Uh, give me one second. I'll see if I can find it. Maybe you should crowdfund it. Sounds like the sort of thing that might go well down that route. When's your when's your Rambo yeah. magazine well, coming out? By the way, my what? Sorry, your Rambo comic thing. When's that uh, coming out? That is going to be coming out in June, apparently. Oh, so okay. yeah, it's it's not far away now. I, oh, I, bought, right. I bought a copy of that. So oh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, here's part two of his question. So my question is. Uh, would that be wise to start with smaller comic strips first to help promote the main story loosely or open big with a long comic? Thank you, and I hope my work will be worthy one day of the fellowship. Mm. I think you'd probably want to start big, wouldn't you? To make a splash. You wouldn't want to start with small things. That's generally what you do when you've already got a built-in audience that are going to watch them or read them or whatever. Well, what is he going from the perspective of trying to get uh, like a traditional publisher or going indie? So he says here, um, yeah, I uh, doesn't. It doesn't say whether it's going to be like traditionally published or self-published or whatever. He just says, uh, "I'm creating a sci-fi universe with its own cultures, languages, and lore, which I am writing a manga series for." Mm. Uh, so it could be he's trying to do it either way. I mean, if you're trying to attract a mainstream publisher, I'd probably go for a big splash, yeah. do the long comic first of all. Um. I'll do a couple more and then finish up. Uh, Ofer Ravid says, Hey all, do you think uh, that you criticize something only because uh, if you don't have something negative to say, your video won't do as well or because you're afraid you won't be invited to these streams? <laughs> Interesting question. So, huh? I mean, what? personally, like, I would rather just be honest. You yeah. know, if there's something that I genuinely loved watching, <laughs> I would just praise it because I don't need the money. I don't need to game the algorithm or any stupid shit like that. I would just rather be honest and and uh and if i enjoyed something i would say because believe it or not i don't go into movies with a, a negative mindset wanting to hate it uh i'd much rather be able to like things but you know i'm not, not sure they mean amazing. like so like do they mean like in the process of reviewing something it's like i better throw in some criticisms otherwise people wouldn't invite me to streams i think yeah, one, I of mean, the, I one, get... of, one of the things that we can say is is uh, all uh, well, certainly all three of well, not more looks he hasn't, but certainly you and I um, went against the grain on Picard season three, and we absolutely hated the first couple of seasons of Picard season two. But we base our opinions on our honesty. Whether our honesty uh, agrees or disagrees with each other is irrelevant. Mola likes stuff that I don't like. Uh, I like stuff that Mola doesn't like. Yeah, uh, and 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 it doesn't affect anything it doesn't affect our relationship and it doesn't affect the way that we would put content out so uh we've been highly uh positive about picard season three uh and massively negative about picard season one and two for the reasons that we give 
And there's, uh, you can always tell, I, I mean, I would say I'm not necessarily pointing at you, but you can always tell when, when people don't really actually watch your content because there is, there is a ton of stuff that we're very positive about and there's a ton of stuff that we're very negative about. And uh, there's certain stuff like, I'll watch a CW show, but I'm doing that to roast because the audience just want, want a bit of fun of, of somebody roasting something. But when it goes to a Marvel movie, I don't I don't go to Ant Man wanting to hate Ant Man. I don't go to Black Widow wanting to hate Black Widow because I was actually really hoping that the Black Widow movie should have been the the uh, Budapest story with her and Hawkeye. That's what I think that that movie should have been. Uh, so I, I go in there hoping to like it. Yesterday I saw the Batman trailer. You know, I was like, this this could be a popcorn movie. I'll take a popcorn movie right now if if I come out going ah, it's just a bit of a laugh. Nothing too much to think about, but yeah, we've got to we got to be true to our values. We've got to be honest, and uh, uh, I'm not looking personally. I'm, I can't speak for anyone else here, but I'm not looking personally to 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 make friends or say things which I think people are going to um, get their confirmation bias sorted. Uh, no, I'm just going to say things which I I personally agree on. And if people clap back at me, clap back at me. I don't care. And if people agree with me, okay, you agree with me. But uh, no, I'll, I'll be I'll be as honest as uh, as the days long in terms of my my opinion. I, I ain't got to lie. I've got no investment to lie. What do I get out of lying? Nothing. Nothing at all. Hmm. No, I agree. And um, you know, I it, nothing pleases me more than going into something like maybe either you know nothing about it, and so you don't have any expectations, or you perhaps think it's uh, it's not going to be great and then it turns out to be very impressive and you you enjoy yourself watching it and i can say great that surprised me uh it's not an admission of defeat or anything when you say um something turned out better than i expected it's 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 a good thing it's a good thing to enjoy and you know if uh, if there's not anything great particularly that's uh, come out recently i'll just occasionally do a, a, a good review of an older film on my second channel or or i'll go back through the the back catalog and do a, a drink of recommends uh, on something i've been meaning to watch or review for a long time and I, I think it's nice for me to get that balance you know it's uh it doesn't it doesn't just result in me being negative about everything all the time you know i like to be able to praise movies that i enjoy and share that with other people yeah you know? i do that and, i do that on my channel all the time and i can't believe how many of my actors in my youngest class have never seen Die Hard, the first one. Whoa, watch. that's a crime against humanity. I actually right brought there. it up the other week, and it's like, uh, sorry, how many of you have not seen Die Hard? And they, like, all the ones under thirty all put their hand up. Oh, I mean, God. even I've seen that one, and I'm a young and that, that makes <laughs> well, me worried for the youth of today. Was, yeah, it's mm. amazing how many of the good older films they've just never even heard of, let alone watched them. And we just assume that they're all watching the same stuff we watched on, te you know. On telly as kids that we saw at the cinema. No, because they have on. more choices. But exactly, they got a hell of a lot more now. choices than we do. Yeah. They're yeah. So they're right. they're so overloaded with content, and their attention span is so short. They don't watch the films the way we we used to when we were younger. It's all changed for them, yeah. and we, we think they're watching all the same good stuff we saw, but they they they're just not. Well, they're not well I gotta to say, it. I like the uh, the different dynamics. Like I like the dopamine hit of doing a Velma critical review because I'm genuinely incredulous and frustrated and want to explore that yeah. and get that out. And that has a quick surge, but then I'll do a review about tar and I like the slow burn, like the months and months and months later, that still gets regular likes and views and views and views of people engaging with that because it's a different dynamic and different feel. So I like getting that balance. Yeah. Well, in, in our, in our, the problem with this is there is a bit of a double edged sword to it is like, because we hear a lot of times what's the biggest gripe is, oh, we want original new stuff. Well, there's been some original new stuff that is, has been from good to bad this year, but most people usually don't click on that kind of stuff or care about that kind of stuff, so they ignore it. So like As was saying, is we, we, you know, you'll get accused of just hating on everything. It's like, well, no, you didn't obviously see us talk about this or that or whatever. And also there's things like, uh, you know, just certain things where people want to hear you tear down certain things too, like you were just saying, Echo, you know, like, they want to hear as, you know, tear down <laughs> bat whammon, right? Or, or roast it or however you want to put yeah. it. They want that. So, like, there is that, too. And sometimes they're just not going to sit there and listen to you talk about Cobra Kai because they know you love it. They love it, too. So, they, you know, they don't have to talk about it or listen yeah. to somebody talking about it. So, yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword sometimes. 
people like to have their they can't they haven't quite been able to articulate what their frustrations and antagonisms are and if you're able to interpret it for them that's like a really pleasurable thing to do yeah that's part and of I it think yeah. that there's and there's nothing wrong with that being able to articulate the complaints that other people have about something um, mm. and just have a bit of a laugh like making fun of it and tearing it down a little bit yeah. Um, but yeah, as long as, as long as it's done for the right reasons, because you genuinely think it's a bad thing, not just like, well, I'm going to go in and just automatically hate this because that's what people want me to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's that's or the fine. squandering the squandering of potential and materials. If you've got gigantic budgets, gigant huge numbers of scriptwriters, and it's still producing shit, then there's an incredulity and frustration there that you want to explore as well. Oh yeah. Um, next one is from Matt Bailey who says I need help, my mate Mike is incredibly ginger and I can find a suitable person of colour to replace him with uh, must hate the message, love drinking and Warhammer <laughs> what can we say, I mean it's ginger genocide you know, if he's dodged it this far he's doing well um, Intelligent Crayon Eater says I bet the Cleopatra show will avoid five plus generations of uh, Ptolemaic dynasty uh, brother sister inbreeding or her being the first to flee at the Battle of Actium. Yeah, I bet they, they avoid all that stuff. Because uh, that would paint a negative image. Uh, and Tubby says, I can't wait for The Rock to play, to play Mao Zedong. <laughs> that, that would be an interesting movie, for sure. Um, but yeah, gentlemen, um, and Doggo, actually. Um, <laughs> we've been streaming for like over three hours, so it's, uh, it's probably about time to wrap things up. Um, it's been awesome to have all of you guys on tonight this might be the biggest panel i've seen on open bar actually now that i've got the, the <laughs> yeah, two mod guys in as well uh and well, it's been great it's been really appreciate, yeah, it. Thank you. Well, appreciate it man yeah. no thank you guys um like i say you know you guys do a, a lot of work on this channel and it's behind the scenes for the most part and it's a bit of a thankless job so i just wanted to bring you on and, and you know give you a, a little bit of an opportunity um to get a little bit of recognition and to say thank you to you guys. I very much appreciate what you do. Ah, bless you. Thank you, man. It means a lot. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. It's nice to meet um, as in person, sort of in person, finally as well, because I've watched so much of his stuff. Same, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, Mahler, and as I watch your guys' channels uh, a lot, um, always tuning into. Uh, Sucks for you, Chamberlain. I uh, know. <laughs> I know, Chamberlain. <laughs> I mean, the critical doggo has got a bigger profile happen. online than I do. It's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going to get him his own Instagram account. Yeah. We need a doggo plushie, actually. I'll get that sorted. Um, but yeah, like for the rest of you guys as well, um, Echo, uh, as Tom, you know, thank you for, for coming in for this tonight. Um, as always, it's, it's a real pleasure to have you on the channel. It's an honor to be here, man. Giving up a few hours of your time. Uh, critical doggo, thank you for coming on. No, he's uh he's yeah. not he's not got much to say it's a thankless right job to be the uh critical dog outs. it is yeah but it's hard working you can see how exhausted he is yeah <laughs> but uh well hey ho thank you for everyone else who's joined us tonight and um you know if there's any super chats that we have missed as always we'll catch up with them uh in a few days but thank you for your generosity it's uh it means a lot and it helps keep everything just running so so smoothly here and i say smoothly like relative you know, we, we get started eventually. Uh, but much appreciated. And, uh, well, we'll catch you next time. But that's all we've got for today. So go away now. Bye.